Made man, baby, baby. I wanna be a hero. I wanna be a hero. Yeah, alright. All them other guys, they are not heroes. Sit them on the sideline, we got to go. I got a couple spots for the island girls. The finest girl deserves all the finest clothes. Yeah, but do a day, oh, cause it's time to pause. She light up like an angel from my eyes and toes. 120 miles down the highway roads. Then I take cold, I'm your hero. Travel around the globe, but it's solo though. Need someone to hold who is gullible. Need a hero? When we take a ride, it's a woho though. Need it out the side, take a photo though. I wanna be a hero to you. Quiero ser el héroe to you. And you can tell me where to go to. Y vamos a viajar el mundo. Cause I wanna be a hero to you. Mama, si eres hermosa, sos una diosa. I know you want a hero for you. I can see your why you and me tonight be alive. This could be your life. Say it be alright. Do or die. You can be the vibe. You can see the rise. But I need to see a sign. Breathing, kissing, fly. Mama Zita, era todo para mí. Arizuna, Arizuna, y Mama Zita, ven aquí para mí. Arizuna, Arizuna. I wanna be a hero to you. Quiero ser el héroe to you. And you can tell me where to go to. Y vamos a viajar el mundo. Sos una diosa. I know you wanna hear what for you in your life, life. Mami, en el rojo. Me andan diciendo que estás buscando un héroe. Vámonos. Que te saca a pasear todos los sábados en el rojo. Qué hermosa. Quiero que sepa que eres la mujer más hermosa que he conocido en mi vida. Beso. Quiero viajar al mundo y hacerte reír todos los días al amanecer. Preciosa. Solo dime dónde quieres ir y viajamos first class. Let go. Mamacita. Eres todo para mí, eres única, eres única y manosita. Ven aquí para mí, eres única, eres única. I wanna be a hero to you. Quiero ser el héroe to you. And you can tell me where to go to. Y vamos a viajar el mundo. Cause I wanna be a hero to you. Mamacita eres hermosa, sos una diosa. I know you wanna hear what for you. Since the creation of the internet, every industry has been turned upside down. Amazon changed retail. Uber changed transportation. YouTube changed video forever. With the invention of crypto, money is next. At the speed technology is growing, the future of money and securities are digital. Nine out of 10 millennials do not trust banks. The value of money relies on trust. Government debt is higher than it's ever been before. Central banks continue to print money. Fortunately, the world has a new solution. Experts predict in seven years, 10% of the world's economy will be in crypto-based assets. Today, 1 billion people have access to the financial industry. Crypto is about empowering the other 6 billion people by banking the unbanked. Do not underestimate this. Do you wish you invested in Google, Amazon, or Netflix before anyone ever knew about them? $1,000 invested in Netflix turned to over a half a million dollars at Token Metrics. We help you find the next Netflix. Token Metrics users think differently about investing. They are early adopters looking for financial freedom. They are people who see a better world, a world without international borders. We believe in a world where everyone has access to the next financial revolution at Token Metrics. 
we are creating a bridge that gets you to that revolution. We will help you make sound investments in this new world. The world's best investors do not rely on their intuition. They embrace technology and AI to invest. Token Metrics uses AI to find invisible patterns in data to help you invest and trade in crypto. In the past, we have used our data-driven system to achieve financial freedom. Now, we are giving you the keys. We created Token Metrics to be the only platform you'll ever need to make money in crypto. We give you AI and access to crypto experts at the best price. The moon is not the limit. To the moon and beyond. Disclaimer. Token Metrics Media LLC does not provide individually tailored investment advice and does not take a subscriber's or anyone's personal circumstance into consideration when discussing investments, nor is it registered as an investment advisor or broker-dealer in any jurisdiction. Information contained herein is not an offer or solicitation to buy, hold, or sell any security. The Token Metrics team has advised and invested in many blockchain companies. A complete list of their advisory roles and current holdings can be viewed here at tokenmetrics.com slash disclosures. All right, all right. Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to Token Metrics Live. We're going to have a hell of a show. Alt Season is here. We thought Alt Season was great, but it just keeps getting better and better. We have Bill joining us as usual. Bill, how are you? Ian, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. Exciting times. Man, I mean, talk about exciting times. <laughs> I mean, Alt Season, melt up melt up uh yes i had to explain that to somebody uh melt up is moon plus fomo that's how you get <laughs> that's that's what melt up is i love it i love it so once again this is live going out to youtube twitter periscope uh, also gets turned into a podcast as well the podcast is blowing up be sure to subscribe if you're watching this for the first time also make sure you turn on the bell so every time we go live it pings you that that we're live We'll be taking live questions, me and Bill, for probably almost two hours, we'll be answering your questions. So we do have a Mentimeter, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a Menti page. Let me just open that up. So if you have any questions for this live stream, just go to menti.com, that's M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 1276226, that's 1276226. And today's stream, altcoin breakouts, how high can Ethereum and Chainlink go? Chainlink just keeps on trucking, Ethereum keeps on trucking, and I mean, people were talking about possibly having a, a recovery this month. I mean, if Bitcoin stays where it's at, we could be in for a really, really big month. Okay, so with that being said, any questions you have, please make sure you, you go to menti.com and, and post those questions. And also be sure to smash the like buttons because we're all going to the moon and beyond. So let's make sure we smash those like buttons wherever you are, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, everywhere, crypto family, please smash the like buttons. Okay, so really, uh, so a few announcements before we kind of hop into the live stream. So as mentioned, this will be the last month for the 14 day free trial. So if you've not yet signed up for Token Metrics and tried out the 14 day free trial, definitely make sure you do it because this is the last month, right? So basically last call, rocket ship is almost out of orbit. So if there was any moment in time for you to try Token Metrics for free, no cost, nothing to lose, now is the time. Because as mentioned before, probably in the next one to two weeks, definitely by the end of the month, we'll be shifting to a paid trial. It'll be a discounted trial, but it'll still be, it, it just won't be free. Right now we're looking at about probably five bucks for one week to try it out, as opposed to paying full cost. But if anybody out there wanted to try our token metrics for free, now is the time, now is the last call. Okay, all right. So with that being said, uh, Bill, how's the, how's the market? 
Well, it almost feels like uh, Chainlink and DeFi are the market, right? <laughs> so it's all it's almost like saying how's the market is almost like saying how's Chainlink. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like you know it's like Bitcoin twenty seventeen all over again. Yeah, um, I think this continues until Chainlink is bigger than Ripple. I think so as well. Chain, which means Chainlink could double, right? So from here. <clears throat> And then, you know, some of the work that I did in, you know, for our, our regular customers, mm -hmm. you know, I said, you know, we're big fans of ringing the register of taking profits in, you know, the DeFi space, or at least, you know, that's what I was telling people because that's prudent. But then I started looking at the charts, Ave, Ren, and I was like, this stuff could literally melt up. And again, melt up means go up go straight up or as i said earlier you know moon plus fomo uh, yeah i, I in other mean words, so it goes up so much it like shocks people and, and i think that that may only be getting started like in, in all of these spaces like one thing at a time is going to have moon plus fomo until either bitcoin or the government stops it yeah yeah i mean so because are they surpassed over a billion dollars in terms of assets locked up i believe uh, here i'll just pull, it, pull up DeFi pulse i know maker has over a billion dollars in terms of assets locked up let me share my screen here so maker ave and curve finance briefly passed over a billion dollars in terms of total value locked up so we have over six billion dollars locked up in DeFi. i mean this is incredible less than three months ago DeFi was under a billion and now it's basically 6 x in three months. And as Bill was mentioned, things could, could possibly keep on going up and up and up, right? So, I mean, for anybody out there who, who was kind of thinking this was a bubble about a pop, I mean, looking from the TA, as Bill mentioned, things look like they're just beginning. Uh, back to you, Bill. Yeah, I mean, 9 billion sounds like a big number when it was 1 billion a couple of months ago. You also got to remember the Fed printed 2.6 trillion in March. <laughs> Nine billion really That's is not million. a big number. Yeah. It's not right. I mean, nine billion is a big number if DeFi is closed and it's and all that money's gone. But yeah. that seems that seems highly unlikely, right? Yeah, it's it's almost like you know in crypto from 2018 where we sometimes brace for that knife experience, right? We're all afraid of that happening again. My theory, based on some of the things I just looked at very simply, was like, you know, this is like, this could be 2018 in reverse, right? Where it was, oh my God, get me out back then. Mm -hmm. And then now it literally turns into, oh my God, get me in, you know, which can be a selling opportunity <laughs> when stuff is up 30 and 40%. But yeah, you know, one of the things that we're doing at Token Metrics is that, you know, this market is, is changing every two to three days. Every two to three days, I have to put a report out. And, you know, at all hours of the night for our premium customers, you know, we're doing almost like a chart review where, you know, I've got my own little personal Mentimeter that says, hey, Bill, can you chart it? <laughs> right? So, I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it, it's uh, you know, we have AI, we have machine learning, but we've got humans because, you know, the nature of the market changes every two to three days. Yeah. And speaking of the market changing, I mean, Dave Portnoy is now in crypto, now officially in Bitcoin, and more important of all, he's now in the Chainlink army, right? He's he's now in the, he's, he's now a Link Marine, which is pretty incredible, right? For those who missed it, uh, basically the Winklevoss twins went to his Hampton house or estate, and basically signed him signed him up for Gemini, had him put I think over quarter of a million into Bitcoin, and I think basically ninety percent into Bitcoin and 10% into Chainlink, right? And now he's tweeting about Chainlink and Bitcoin. So imagine if all that stock Robinhood audience now gravitates towards crypto because of Dave. I mean, so I think, I mean, things are, things are on the come up. All right, so with that being said, tell us what you think. 
Are you are you happy for alt season? Are you are you happy for Chainlink for Ethereum? What altcoins are making you the most money this month in the last week? Uh, definitely post in the comments below. With the, and and uh, we'll go through that. Okay, so let me just take a look here at the at the comments and see how our crypto family is doing. So first person on the stream was Red for Danger. What's up, Red? How are you? What's up, Ben? Good to have you here, Doctor B. Sh sh shamanism. Mr. Bitcoin, Jacob, Tiger, James, what's up, James? King Nick, what's up? Archie, what's up? Facebook family, Mr. Bitcoin, the UK investor, Subra Jyoti, what's up, boss? Why does Aveni? <laughs> I know you didn't miss anything. What's up, Alice? Great to have you. I mean, for awesome, awesome crypto family. Be sure to smash the like buttons. And once again, as mentioned, any questions you have, please go to menti.com to submit your questions. Go to menti.com. And once again, to share the code for those who, who are just joining us. Um, let me, menti.com. The code is 1276226. That's 1276226 to submit any questions you have. Okay, so let me just cover a few items I wanted to cover before we hop into the TA. All right. So first of all, uh, so first of all, we just want to say thank you to you today. Uh, it's it's a crypto blog that covered token metrics. They covered the launch of our indices. So we definitely highly encourage you to go, go and check out the article. Uh, this is from Vladislav uh, Privet <laughs> Drizia. So he covered the launch of our 14 AI indices. Uh, this, this is actually a pretty big blog they get over a million people a month so thank you to crypto family out there just kind of putting the word out there in terms of the, of the launch of the token metrics indices um, highly encourage you to go check this out they kind of covered why we think this is really a game changer in the crypto space because as mentioned before anybody can give you data but being able to give you actionable data and really give you fast time to value in terms of telling you how to really build a fully diversified portfolio very quickly without having to go through and read through CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap, Glassnode, all those different data points. We tell you basically how to build an allocated portfolio in a snap, right? And we do it through our expertise with human capital, as Bill mentioned, but also with AI. And quite frankly, the AI models have been very, very accurate to a point where, I mean, even us ourselves, we were pretty shocked at how, how well they've done. Because if we, here, I'll just pull up our AI models at, at the moment to kind of show you how they've been performing. So just for transparency, right? So these are all the different indices we have for Trader. And the best perf performing index has been the Trader monthly price prediction, which is up over 700%. I mean, so just, just think about that. That's, that's not one coin, but the entire portfolio, because it's easy for somebody to get one coin to pump up 7x. But to get the entire portfolio, that means you're getting a bit a better risk to return reward, right? Because if you have one coin go up seven x, that all your money is in that one coin, right? But if you diversify across seven or ten assets, and you have the, you have all of them go up seven x, that's 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 a better way to invest, right? So the fact that the AI models for price prediction and weekly as well. Is, is also getting better. So this is the weekly. So the weekly, about a month ago, or so ago, wasn't doing too well, it was only about 35% while Bitcoin was basically flat. Um, but in the last month or so, it's now up 183%. So definitely encourage you to go check that out. And as, as mentioned, uh, we do plan to keep on making new updates. We are currently testing out some new indices. So the idea is to get the performance metrics on the site. So for anybody who's gone to token metrics, if you go to the performance metrics, let me pull that up here. For example, let's take, let's use Chainlink as an example, because people love Chainlink. <laughs> Chainlink has been, Chainlink was, uh, disclosure, I am holding Chainlink as well as part of the price prediction index. So Chainlink was pretty much the big winner in the price prediction index for this month. But if we go here to performance metrics, so we're taking all these performance metrics for all the different cryptocurrencies and we, 
we're combining them to build a different index based purely on performance. So based purely on over 50 quantitative data points. So data points such as cumulative return, sharp ratio, Sortino ratio, max drawdown, volatility, uh, the monthly return, annual return. So over 52 different data points that quants use. So this is not looking at fundamentals, not looking purely at price, it's not looking at TA or technology, it's looking at just purely quantitative data points. And we're building an index based off of this. And this is also going to be powered by AI. And in our testing, this index has been pretty, pretty accurate. The accuracy has been, I would say, about over 80% accurate in terms of being able to predict what coins will perform well. So we're very excited to to launch this. Uh, there is no launch date yet, but pretty much I would say probably within the next two to four weeks, we plan to launch it after some more testing. But quite frankly, this could really compete with the monthly price prediction index in terms of just accuracy, right? So for example, right now, if you go to Tokyo Metrics, we currently have basically four grades. We have fundamental grade, technology grade, technical analysis grade, and the, and the overall grade. And the plan is we'll now add a fourth grade called performance metrics grade or just performance met grade, right? Based purely just on quantitative data points. And if this ends up performing well long term, this might even fully replace the fundamental grade because long term, the goal would be to try to make every data point we have completely quantitative and try to, to remove the subjectivity involved in evaluating cryptocurrencies because that would allow our team to very quickly create grades almost like this whenever new coins launch. Because right now, the issue that we've kind of been having during, during alt season is when, when new coins list, having to go through, do code reviews, do fundamental analysis on them, it definitely does take a while. And sometimes by the time we're done, those coins have pumped, right? And those gains are gone. So for people out there who are who, who want to trade or speculate, you want to really kind of create a faster process to find those hidden gems before anybody does. And actually, I can pull up a list that we, we have been testing at the moment. Now, just give me a second here. So to kind of show you how how pretty accurate it's been. So in testing, the, the performance metric index, the top 10 coins based on performance, it based purely on, on performance metrics are why earn basically YFI, Band Protocol, which has been a winner already, BZX, Cardia Chain, Teller, uh, Melon Protocol, Darwinia, Sora. Sora has done a 50x. So uh, based on on this index, it would have had exposure to to those returns. Uh, then P Network. So once again, those are the coin, the coins we're that the index has shown have been performing well based on purely just performance metrics. Once again, this is not financial advice. This is still in testing. This is not not even beta mode yet, but we do hope to be able to launch this hopefully within two to four weeks and really just offer more value to our customers. And with that being said, uh, Bill, any other comments to add on to that? Well, as an analyst, you know, the more ways you can give me to parse and cut up data without me having to do a lot of work. In other words, everything sort of pops up for me. In other words, I'm not any different than anyone else out there in the audience, right? I need to make sense of the numbers. So when your guys on the back end create these metrics, it becomes just one more tool uh, where I can see things that I normally wouldn't have, right? That's the beauty of token metrics without sounding like a salesperson, right? You can see the unseen and then you can make more decisions or faster decisions or both. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. And, and just to kind, of, to kind of add on to that, I mean, so during this alt season, we've seen incredible growth, right? So definitely thank you to Crypto Family. As mentioned on the last two live streams in, G in July, we grew over 60%. And just just based purely on customers, and then this month, just in two weeks, we're, we're already on pace to grow sixty percent as well. All right, so this is pretty insane, right? So we we definitely can't do what we do without the crypto family. So thank you for all the support, 
and even especially the professional plan. Professional plan has been blowing up. Um, we've been averaging, I would say, probably four to eight people joining a day, which is pretty crazy uh, to, to a point where Bill is not doing TA basically at midnight <laughs> or later <laughs> or later right right so so thank you bill for for, for for just being able to do custom ta to our to our private group that being said thank you crypto family and now let's hop into the show okay so let's let's hop straight into crypto therapy bill okay let's uh Okay, so I know this is the Tokenmetric show, but uh, I don't know. We could just call it the Chainlink show <laughs> if we wanted to, right? Or the yeah. Chainlink market. Okay, so Chainlink. Uh, it's probably going to wind up being bigger than Ripple. Uh, right now, it's larger than life. Um, I know that people probably feel like they missed it and can't get involved. Uh, people said that at 10, 12, 14, 16... Uh, and they may say it all the way up to 24, okay? Because these sort of, these lines, the way I've drawn them, they're called GAN lines. Uh, I think for the crypto universe, we could just call them moon lines because really it's the only <laughs> way to chart something that, that, that was doing nothing and then goes up 7x, right? <laughs> and then I use these for navigation. So, you know, when it comes to chain link, I, I just think, my theory and the AI all line up that, you know, the whole market is going to push up and get as close to Ethereum as it can, right? It's like powerlifting. The entire market cap of alts is just rising so rapidly, okay? Now, if we, if we then go to things like Ethereum, right? Um, Ethereum is doing everything you'd expect it to do to just keep slowly moving higher, right? So if Ethereum goes up, it feels like, you know, well, well let me start again. Chainlink goes up and then Ethereum follows. And then everything follows Ethereum because I think there's a new play out there. And I think this idea of you know, can we have a new Ethereum for DeFi or can we have more than one Ethereum? Like Tron is up, et cetera. So Chainlink moons, that's kind of its own beast. Ethereum goes, it's sitting right on top of a line and then it goes to 425. And I've got other work in Ethereum that says when Ethereum rallies from this point out, it's in $50 increments, right? It just keeps building up steam. Now, speaking of steam, Let's talk about the monster, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Bitcoin used to be our friend. And I don't know, maybe we could start calling it a frenemy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because, okay. So I, I sit here and I look at this Bitcoin chart. I go, okay, if this goes to 16,000, you know, the alt party is going to, I mean, it's going to be like a high school party getting broken up, not by cops, but by SWAT at 16,000. <laughs> It's not well, going to be good at all. Yeah. At all. Okay. So sideways Bitcoin is everybody's best friend. Uh, there's some evidence that Bitcoin could be stuck around 12K the way it was stuck at 10K for a while, especially if you look at our price prediction index. Uh, you could also make an argument that other coins say Cosmos, Zcash, Stellar's moving today. A lot of other bigger altcoins could start mooning before Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is the wild card out there, okay? There's, you know, but the thing that's funny is, and this is, again, what's old is new again. Mm -hmm. At Wall Street, there's a saying, the market climbs the wall of worry, right? So I can get on the show and go, I'm worried about Bitcoin or I'm worried about, you know, DeFi coins being too high. And then I say to myself, wait a minute, what am I talking about? It climbs mm -hmm. the wall of worry, right? So I, I, you know, I got over it, changed the content. You know, that's what technical analysts do. We change our mind for a living. <laughs> but Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the risk. 
But the thing is, again, what stops this chain link Ethereum, you know, new Ethereum DeFi chemical reaction that's going on? I don't know. I'm certainly not getting in front of it. Yeah, You got to book profits when you have them. But as an analyst, I'm like, I'm not stepping in front of chain link. <laughs> no way. I am just not doing it. Yeah. So, so question. So basically, Bitcoin goes sideways. We're all pretty much happy. But if Bitcoin rallies to 16,000, 17,000, how should people hedge? Okay, well, hedging, hedging is a really difficult game. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a little off color. Mm -hmm. um, hedging can be so difficult that there's a Wall Street motto that says, uh, hedges are something that little doggies pee on. <laughs> okay, because it's that difficult to do a hedge uh -huh. now i would think that the way a normal crypto investor would hedge an alt portfolio mm -hmm. is if they can have a futures account own the bitcoin futures contract okay because mm -hmm. it's separate from your crypto portfolio you can put a stop in and if bitcoin lurches up to sixteen thousand you might be able to do something where you buy more and more Bitcoin futures in the event that your altcoin portfolio suddenly tanks, right? Mm -hmm. and that's probably for bigger players. Yeah. You know, for smaller players, um, you know, the best way to hedge may be to trade. So I know that, you know, we like to hodl and we don't like we don't necessarily want people buying into 20% up moves. Uh, but the thing is, if you can get out on a 20% up move, wait a day, see if Bitcoin moves and then get back in, you can be what I would call nimble. It's a, it's a form of active portfolio management, right? right? Here's another, here's an example from equities when people had to do it during the financial crisis, right? Mm -hmm. This was in a down market. So people, the market would go down and then people would cover because they didn't know if a government official or if some positive news was going to come out that might cause the market to lurch up. So they would almost, you know, they would have their portfolio, they would own it during the day, but they would take some of it off at night, right? With Bitcoin, it seems like the weekend, right? Like I get off the call and mm -hmm. I, I, I am, my personal wall of worry as I talk about the market we get off the call and all the hedge funds are coming in and the market moves 4%. As soon as we're done talking about it, I go, please let me be on the right side. Mm -hmm. So to make a long story short, um, you can have a portfolio, but you can move in and out of it. You can be in it on Monday, out Tuesday, if you're worried, and then back in Wednesday. So that's how I would answer the Bitcoin question. Now, that's not the way you would normally do it, but when you have something as monstrous as Bitcoin, that's how you have to play it. Yeah, I, th I think well said. And if anybody is kind of doing that and hedging and going into stable coins, I think with DeFi, they're now there. There's just so many different options to really hedge with with stable coins, right? Especially when it comes to yield farming, with Curve, with Wi-Fi, and all these other D DeFi tokens, where really you're basically getting yield on your stable coin. I think that also makes hedging into stable coins even more attractive. All right. That being said, tell us what you think. Uh, what do you think is going to happen if Bitcoin goes up? Do you think alts will crash? Do you think alts will survive? Uh, if Bitcoin goes sideways, what alts do you think will do well? Is it Chainlink? Is it Ethereum? Uh, is it some other altcoin? Tell us down in the comments below. All right, so let's check in with our audience and see how we're doing. And once again, be sure to subscribe, smash the like button. This is getting, yeah, I think this is now by far our most popular live stream. Uh, on the Tokenmetrics channel. So thank you, Crypto Family. We've now passed 7,000 subscribers. We're basically doubling almost every month or so, right? So definitely thank you, Crypto Family. Calvio says Chainlink is like Tesla. You cannot bet against it. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. When Lambo, <laughs> uh, hopefully soon for, for everyone. Alts will rise with Bitcoin, says crazy. Uh, Trust Trump looks good. Bless the quest, y'all. Thank you, Francilina. Randy says, great stream. Thank you, crypto family. 
Now, Mr. Bitcoin says, I saw ETH go from $40 in May 2017 to $1,500 in December 2017. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy how fast the market can move. Uh, so as Bill mentioned, you, do, you definitely don't want to hop in front of a moving spaceship or rocket ship. But uh, you also want to make sure you're on board as it's going up to the moon and beyond. Yes, so for questions, uh, please go to menti.com. And the code, once again, let me pull it up. Uh, just give me a second here. So, so the code is 1276226. That's 1276226. Go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com to submit your questions. And we'll basically be going through the questions uh, in order. Uh, we'll also be answering a few questions that a professional group has taught us to cover prior to the call. So definitely want to make sure we, we answer their questions as well. Okay, so let me... Let me just see what else. Okay, so we have Crypto Showdown. Okay, so. All right, so time for Crypto Showdown. Go to menti.com and tell us what you think. And for those who don't know, Crypto Showdown, we basically have two cryptocurrencies that go head to head. And you, the audience, tells us what cryptocurrency you think has more upside in it, basically in the next few months, right? So Chainlink has, has been winning every single week. So... We're now kind of beginning. So now the plan is we'll keep on having the winner repeat each week until the winner gets dethroned. So now the question is, what cryptocurrency do you think has more upside? Is it Chainlink? Is it Ethereum? Which one would you put your money in? Uh, disclosure, I currently do have Chainlink and also Ether as well. So uh, I'm kind of conflicted. <laughs> but uh, so, I mean, because I think long term, all of us can say Ethereum is definitely a better project but i think if we're thinking short term right in the next one month maybe two months what project has more upside right so is it ethereum is it chain link go to minting.com and tell us what you think uh bill what's your take okay well i'm certainly on the side of not betting against chain link <laughs> i mean do you realize if chain link if chain link becomes bigger than ripple Chainlink would have to double from here. So if the market cap chart read Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, which is pretty much what it reads in everyone's head right now, but if that was mathematically true, Chainlink would double. So, I, I, mean, I, I mean, could Ethereum double? I think it can, but then there's this issue about the gas fees. Right, there's yeah. issues about the network being jammed up, and other Ethereum's like like you know, EOS woke up this mm -hmm. week, right? Yeah. That was the original Ethereum replacement, Tron. <laughs> so I I would go with Chainlink only because, you know, if you don't understand what a melt up is, it probably you would probably find out if Chainlink went from sixteen to thirty. Yeah, uh, well said, well said. Uh, quite frankly, I, I think I would also agree, right? So once again, this is not long term. This, this is just purely short term, right? So in terms of what coin has more upside as a trade, uh, I think pretty much you kind of go with the winner, right? Chainlink has been making all of us a bunch of money. And until that stops, I think we just keep on chugging along. So uh, here, I'll check with the audience in the comments below and see their thoughts. So Benji says, ETH will explode. You guys aren't ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Bitcoin says, I remember one chain. Okay. Uh, ben says, chain link end of year, Ethereum 2021. Okay. Interesting take. Kelvio says, I sold all my ETH for ch for link. Oh, man. Okay. That's, uh, that's, that's going all in. <laughs> then uh, Tyrone says, chain link is built on Ethereum. Long term, ETH is king. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree as well. I think long term, ETH is king. But in, in terms of this month as a trade, I think Chainlink is, definitely has more, more upside. Then uh, Smark says, Link is a joke. Nine wells own 80%. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think when it comes to sh a short term trade, things like that don't really matter, honestly. I think it's just kind of the price action and the charts because 
there's been so much FUD on Chainlink and it's, it's basically plowed through everything, right? The, the Zeus Capital FUD, all, all kinds of FUD. So uh, I, I don't think the nine wells owning 80%, if that's true, is going to stop it at this point. Otherwise, it would have stopped it a long time ago. Okay. Um, Vincent says Chainlink is on Ethereum. Yes. Chainlink will win against Ethereum. All right. So... All right, so let's let's see who the winner is. So, the people have spoken, and wow, okay. Chainlink has been defeated. The people have chosen Ethereum. Ethereum as the winner for Crypto Showdown. Um, I, I'm actually not too surprised. I mean, because Ethereum does have a huge, huge market cap, huge audience, right? So I think lots of people are kind of doing it as a long-term investment, right? W which does make sense. But but I think. I think short term, I would still kind of go with Chainlink, even though I have both Ethereum and, and Chainlink. I think short term as a trade, just because Chainlink has a lower market cap and has just more room for growth, right? And kind of as, as, as Bill mentioned, with, with Ethereum, one of the things that's really kind of annoying with DeFi, the gas fees. I mean, having to pay 20 bucks for 40 bucks, I mean, just to do a transaction, I feel like I'm getting nickel and dimed every single transaction. And the, the, the entire point of crypto was to not have the same transaction fees and, and just fees in general as banks and Wall Street. But if they're making, if they're bringing those same fees onto the blockchain, it kind of defeats the purpose, right? But I mean, I am still bullish long-term on, on Ethereum. Actually, probably I'm definitely more bullish long-term on Ethereum than Chainlink, but short-term, I think Chainlink has uh, more upside. Um, any other comments, Bill? Yes. When you when you're in one of these phases where you know each sector of the market goes up fifteen to twenty percent of the time, once something gets loose, like you know, it, it goes without saying that as Chainlink moves up the market cap ladder, that can also push Ethereum. I remember when Ethereum and Ripple used to go back and forth, right? You know, yeah. Ripple would you know, eclipse Ethereum on the market cap chart and then Ethereum would just rip to the upside. So, you know, Ethereum can rally in $50 increments. And I think one of the big questions that I don't necessarily have an answer to is the real way to determine who's going to win between these two currencies or these two coins is going to be when hedge funds or big institutions, you know, like the Winklevoss twins go visit somebody and that somebody <laughs> goes, oh, gee, crypto, wow. Okay, when that starts happening at the institutional level, particularly when they're all on the beach watching Chainlink double, okay, <laughs> Ethereum, Ethereum may be the only place where they can go jump in and get involved because they're that big. So I don't want to act like there's no Ethereum story. Mm -hmm. uh, I get what our audience is saying. It's just, um, you know, it's never the same thing. History does repeat itself, but it, it's never the same thing twice. So. You know, it, it feels like a melt up, but you know, I, I can't, I can't completely tell you how it unfolds. Otherwise, we could have this meeting from my yacht, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, tell us what you think. Uh, are you more bullish short term as a trade for Ethereum or Chainlink? Tell us down in the comments below. Okay. All right. So now moving on. So we have one more question of the day. Now this one. Uh, I think it's going to be heavily contested, uh, or maybe not. Okay, so go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, use the code 1276226, that's 1276226, and tell us what is the top blockchain out there. All right, so it's the time for everyone who has a favorite blockchain to have their voices be heard. Tell us, what blockchain are you more bullish on? Is it... Ethereum? Is it Cardano? Is it Tezos? EOS? Zilliqa? Stellar? Or Tron? So seven blockchains, uh, all of them basically smart contract blockchains, DAP blockchains. Which ones do you think have more upside? Now, to cut, let's kind of frame the question. Let's say long term, right? So long term, which project, which blockchain would you put your money in? Right, so I know me personally, 
um, the one I do have uh, ether as mentioned but if I had to kind of rank these myself in terms of which ones I think have more upside, more, more upside long term kind of based on our ratings Zilliqa I mean, I mean is good Cardano has great technology uh, top five technology in terms of blockchain now Tezos is good Tron is probably last uh, EOS I mean, it's not really decentralized compared to other blockchains, but yeah, I mean, I think I think Ethereum would be first for me. Uh, how about you, Bill? Yeah, I mean, I think there's no question about it. it, it it's Ethereum on that list, right? I, I do think other, these other names can rally, and I do think that would be a good thing. You know what? Because there's a bunch of people developing Ethereum 2.0, and we've all thought that they need to work a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Right. And watching yeah. Tron and EOS start rallying, you know, th suddenly they, they'll work faster, really. So I, right. I, I think other other things like the chain link and those things moving. But, you know, let's face it, Ethereum 2.0 comes out. That's it. It's over. <laughs> right. That's it. Yeah. Just ask our code. I ask our code guy. Right. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, so, so Paresh, our, uh, our tech review uh, developer, uh, he, he, he's very bullish on Ethereum. He actually even met Vitalik in London at, at a developer conference. All right, so the audience is voting, the voice has been heard, and the winner is Ethereum. Shocker, shocker, not really. But I think what's really more interesting is just the, 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 the order, right? So second place to last. So we have Cardano, number two. Tezos, Zilliqa, EOS, Stellar, and Tron. Not surprised with Tron being last. Cardano being number two makes sense, I think, as well. Tezos. Tezos is one where over 80% of, of their holders are staking, which is pretty incredible, right? So they've definitely had lots of engagement and activity amongst the community towards staking, and lots of projects are trying to model them for staking. Then... Uh, yeah, so I think this is a very good list. I think our audience definitely has done their research. Uh, I, I'm basically in, in full agreement with them. But hey, do you think the audience is wrong? Uh, tell us down in the comments below. Do, is there a blockchain we missed? Is there an up and coming blockchain that's a hidden gem that we don't know? Or do you think the, the rankings should be different? Tell us what you think down in the comments below. All right, so I think with that being said, time for us to hop into crypto therapy. Um, so Bill, you mentioned, uh, there are basically some blockchains that are trying to, trying to rally. So you mentioned Tron, you mentioned, uh, EOS. How, how's it yes. look so like let me, from let a me, TF perspective? Let me, let me, uh, let me cover it from a big picture perspective first. Um, uh, we'll start, we'll start with your favorite chart. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is altcoin market cap. Okay, it's a three day chart. Okay, now what we've had is a double bottom. All right, and that means that altcoin market cap, okay, can go up probably past where it was in May of 2018. Okay, to give you an idea on how much market cap that could add, you could be talking about adding 50 to 60 billion dollars. To altcoin market cap. Wow. Now, it, it, right. So if that happens, that's going to have to be led by, you know, your Cardano's, your Tezos, possibly your EOS. I don't know if Bitcoin Cash can get involved. Litecoin could wake up for God's sakes. I, it, it, it's fair game. So, you know, moving back over to things like you know, just, just looking at say Tezos, right. Bringing the chart up now. Okay. There are a lot of charts in the sort of big alt or Ethereum competition space that are making big green candlestick breakouts. Okay. Uh, I was looking at EOS EOS versus Bitcoin, okay? And this here looks like everyone just gave up, right? Everyone just said, oh, 
you know what, uh, this is not going to participate in the rally or in DeFi or whatever. And then I saw this thing go green a couple of days ago, and it reminded me of an article that Multicoin Capital wrote about that coin. Now, I know that coin has its problems, right? Mm. But it was originally made as a better Ethereum. And that whole theme is fair game. There's nothing wrong with Ethereum. They know that we know they're going to get it together for 2.0. But yeah, could absolutely. somebody sneak in, right? And you, with the way they can release these DeFi coins, right? Like, you know, we got five or six a day or more coming out onto these decentralized exchanges. Well, if somebody had a nice platform with low gas fees or it just all worked, there's no reason why you couldn't have 10 DeFi coins operating on that same space and pull in $2 billion if people liked it. So that's a recipe for some of this stuff to really move, right? Like speculation is back even in the big coins possibly. Yeah, well said. Well said, Bill. Okay, all right. So let me. Okay, so we have a question or a request from our private group. So somebody wants to take a look at Binance BNB. Could you pull that up? So here it comes. Let me just. Okay. So one of the things that's been so important for technical analysis this year, is this very ironic theme of buying something when it's just below resistance because what it does is it presses against the resistance and then it just explodes now i i know that b and b you know binance is 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 getting a challenge from decentralized exchanges but the coin is rallying slowly and it's not backing off it's not right so this gray area was the point where it fell out of bed in march and I think it's safe to say that crypto in general is a lot better off than it was in March. Matter of fact, you know, I know that Binance coin was up at 40. I know a lot of things have made and gone back to their highs. So why can't this one go back to their highs? Yeah. Okay. And this could be one of the things that leads a breakout because I don't think Binance is going to stand around and just get left out of whatever's happening in crypto. Right. I saw they came out with, you know, perpetual um, trading instruments. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys are going to innovate and they're going to innovate quickly. So yeah. this whole idea of not fading something that's doing this creeping move towards resistance is a huge technical theme. And I, it's kind of worked every time, right, on quality mm -hmm. coins. Yeah. So actually, there's a request from... Joe Ball, he says, could you take a look at uh, BNB versus ETH, basically altcoins versus Ethereum, as opposed to USDT, just to kind of see how that's playing out? Okay, so he wants to look at BNB versus Ethereum? Yeah. In terms of trading pairs. Thank you for that request, Joe. Okay, all right. I'm going to bring up the chart, and then, uh, you know, this is... Uh kind of like homemade gravy where we're doing it live. <laughs> Watch me have to have to actually draw on the chart uh, while, while we're sitting wow. here. Okay. So obviously, hmm. you know, the Ethereum rally has kind of, you know, left this coin, you know, left Binance coin in the dust. Okay. Now to me, It's very difficult to want to give, to want to catch a falling knife. Mm -hmm. If I had to make some quick observations, you can see down here where buyers are trying to buy the dip. In other words, 
Binance Coin is trying to keep up with ETH, but buyers continually get frustrated, right? So in crypto, with the way things have been moving, you kind of don't get in front of the moving train. So Binance Coin versus the dollar looks okay because it's a creep, but Binance versus ETH looks like kind of a bleed. You know what I'm saying? It just, mm -hmm. you know, dip buyers trying to come in. Okay. And then all of a sudden it's up new low. Right now, if you absolutely loved Binance coin, right. This is the time to get in, right. Buy low, buy when all the bulls are going, Oh my God, I'm done. Cause there's also, I also see that on the chart. I just would be careful, you know, cause I, started the show by saying, you know, if ETH starts rallying, it's going to start moving in $50 increments. Right. I don't think Binance coin can keep up with that on a, you know, on a percentage basis. Yeah. And to kind of add on to that, I find it very interesting that Binance basically re reaches all time high during alt bear market, but during alt season, it's basically getting crushed. Right. So it's kind of like all the other alts are finally catching up to the gains Binance has made. And it, and I think because long term, all of us are bullish on Binance. Binance has great fundamentals. Binance is a cash cow. They're basically printing money. And I, I don't really see them going away anytime soon. Right. So the fact that lots of people are now are really in DeFi, even if centralized exchanges have to innovate and make new business models, Binance is in the best position to survive. Right? So I think if, if, if anything, the mid tier and low tier exchanges might become extinct because of DeFi, but Binance will still survive because Binance has so much cash on hand that they can't really die, right? So so kind of as Bill mentioned, I think right now people are kind of looking at the shiny, new, sexy DeFi protocols, and they, they, they're they basically forgetting that Binance is a legit company. It's probably them and Coinbase are the biggest companies in crypto, and, it's, and they have a token. So I don't think they're going to let the token die uh, long term, right? So I, I think it's definitely very, very undervalued. But that's just my opinion. That's not financial advice. Uh, as usual, do your own research. But tell us, what do you think? Are you bullish on Binance, on BNB? Do you think uh, Binance will bounce back uh, during alt season? Do you think there'll be a time for it to rally? Or do you think everyone is going to DeFi? Tell us what you think down in the comments below. All right, so be sure to smash the like button, subscribe. Let's check in here with our audience and see how we're doing. Yes, yes. So for questions, please use the Menti code 12762262. Send your questions there. Okay, somebody, uh, Vivid says Bitcoin is getting ready to pop. Um, Yuna says uh, Tron is dangerous. Okay, thank you for the... For the tip, uh, game says, have you checked out Mooniswap.exchange or she gas, CHI gas? Yes, so I do have CHI gas. Actually, let, let me let me try to cover this because we did cover this on our on our private call, but I haven't really covered this publicly. But I think it will be something valuable to anybody out there who's who's basically in in DeFi, right? So let me share my screen. So if you're in DeFi. And you're trading on on DEXs. I highly encourage you to, you use DEX aggregators because they give you the best prices in the market. So, for example, Uniswap. If we pull up their exchange here, uh, I forget what trade somebody was trying to make, but there was somebody in our private group who was trying to make a trade, and we basically saved saved them a bunch of money uh, through a, a DEX aggregator. Uh, sorry, just give me one second here. It's asking me to configure my wallet which I, which I don't want okay yeah, I guess that's not gonna sorry having some issues here with metamask <laughs> uh, okay but either way anyway so per, let's say you come here you want to make a trade a swap right um, let's say you want to swap from from eth right? In this case, right, in my test wallet, uh, let's say I want to swap for ETH, and I want to swap to, let me 
Let, let me find a token. I think it was... Okay, I don't have any elf. Okay, all right, so in this case, let's just say ETH, and I'm trying to swap to some random token called AMN. All right, so here, down here, they give you the price impact, right? So before doing a, a trade, right? So let's say I'm trying to swap 10 Ether. Okay, this price impact is way too high to do it here. But if you go to a DEX aggregator, you can put your trade here. So let's say I was trying to trade from Ethereum, right? So let's say it was 10 Ether and we were trying to go to AMP not okay they don't have it here but anyway what th what this does is it gets your trade and it divides it across several dexes to get you th the best prices right so basically you have less slippage and you end up saving a lot more money right so in this case for this trade it basically sends everything to one, ex one to one dex however if you have large orders it divides that up and sends it to several dexes so you get better price execution right so you this includes muniswap oasis kyber right all 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 the major dexes giving you the best price action so i definitely highly highly encourage using platforms like this as opposed to using one specific dex because this will always try to get you the best price now let's say there's only one dex right i, I I would say, let's say you mainly use one DEX and that gives you the best prints, then that's fine. But I would still, prior to making any trade on that one DEX, come here and compare just to make sure you, you aren't getting nickel and dimed with, with fees, right? Because one of the downsides of DeFi is you have to have lots of money to really be able to make money, right? Uh, so if you're able to kind of minimize, minimize the cost and transaction fees you're paying, then I think that definitely adds, adds, adds up to more money in your pocket. So I highly encourage you check that out. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of my take on on that. Uh, Bill, any any comments? Sure. A lot of people, possibly including me, you know, would think that DeFi and you know Uniswap is like a casino. But when you start seeing DEX aggregators, okay, you start seeing better liquidity. And once upon a time, I actually got to witness the creation of better liquidity in things like foreign exchange and the US Treasury markets. Okay. And the more liquidity you have, the more legit you are for trading and investing. So for the DeFi detractors out there, this type of stuff that makes it easier, okay, makes it more like the economics book where it's more efficient, okay? I know it's kind of boring, but it, it adds to the long-term viability of the DeFi theme. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Bill. Okay. So I think without further ado, time for us to, to hop straight into the AMA. I think people... I've put in all the questions. Okay, all right. So first question uh, is actually a question for for Bill. So question is, how high can Waves go? So that's Waves blockchain. That's the, the Russian blockchain. So let's have Bill pull that up. Uh, I can also pull up that on my end and see what the price prediction models have to say on that. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, I've been watching this. All right. So, okay. So if we look at it like this, it looks like a lot of other coins where it just sort of sat there and went up a lot and you missed it. Can't do it. Okay. And if we have the right symbol, right, that is the right symbol yes. waves. Yeah. Waves. Okay. All right. <laughs> and then we do this realizing that waves all the way back in 2018 was at 22. All of a sudden at four, it doesn't look that expensive. Now, one of the themes that I've been looking at in Wave, so the answer to how high can it go, uh, it, it can go back to where it was in May of 2018, right? In other words, clearly whatever, which is like eight and a half, okay? Basically, my thinking is it's very simple. It's like 
crypto, the story is so much better than it was in the middle of 2018, which was really, I don't know, it was kind of a Bitcoin and then wild speculation was like the other theme. This is like the development of a whole new financial system, right? So there's no reason why things can't go back to where they were in 2018. Like back then it didn't make sense. Now it does. So why not go to eight, right? And that's why it's trading like this. Uh, this also fits the idea of the bigger the, the bigger the base, the higher in the space. In other words, it sits for a long time, bulls give up, and then it goes. Yeah, well so, said. You know, as, lo as long as there's any FOMO out there. Yeah, so actually, let me pull up the price predictions and see how they're doing here. Yeah, so price predictions, it's, it's really kind of, as Bill mentioned, it's now, it's now kind of basically going towards the moon, right? So our predictions are around May and June were actually higher than, bef than the actual price. Then the actual price kind of went up. Then for all of July and kind of first week of August, it was in, a, in, a, in alignment. Then the price just kind of took off, right? And now it's basically at $4. Our models are still kind of adjusting. They kind of have it basically going flat for basically all of the, the month. But one thing to note is these are rolling 30-day price predictions, so they do adapt with new data. So pretty much every every day there's there's a, there's a new update. So pretty much the last day's data gets added into the the model, and that gets redone to 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 predict the next 30 days out. So definitely keep an eye an, an eye on that one. Okay, all right. So thank you for that question. Uh, let me go to the next one. Okay, so we can't really do uh, reviews on the air because it, it just takes time to do an in-depth review, right? So honestly, can't really do much on Montreal Dow, unfortunately. But uh, we could possibly in the private group. Okay, so next one. How high can IOTA go? Thanks to token metrics, got in at 37 cents. Congratulations. I mean, that's great. Uh, that's great if token metrics is making you money. I mean, that's that's what we're all about. Crypto family. All right. So Bill's going to be pull, Bill's going to pull that up. Okay. So here's uh here's IOTA versus the dollar. I'm actually going to switch the time frame just to kind of make a point, right? Mm -hmm. So right here is where everybody started to give up right that was the start of the 2020 give up trade which was of course added you know exacerbated by the virus situation in terms of how high can iota go well why can't iota now that we're at this point where we're going from disbelief to belief, right? In other words, we've just kind of gotten back to neutral. They just mm -hmm. unwound the calamity from the spring. So if in October or August of 2019 or July of 2018, this was near a dollar. Okay. Now I, I don't, some of this is going to sound like I've, be, I've, I've turned into a moon boy or something. I drank some mm -hmm. potion. <laughs> and it's not but if you ask me how high can something go right it, it can go it can go back to where it was when all the pain started right there's a lot of resistance here at 50 cents so you know some consolidation at that level may be warranted but if you say how high can it go right it's like physics speed, magnitude, and direction. In other words, what goes down one way or, you know, the speed of the down move, the up move can be the same speed. So wow. if it melted down in 2018, it can melt up in 2020. Now, is IOTA one of those candidates? I don't know. We have to see what happens at 50 cents, right? 
But if you like it and you're long it and you want to stay with it, by all means. Yeah, I mean, because I haven't really heard much on IOTA since since 2017, quite frankly. Right, because back then they had the, the whole partnership. Now going to our price prediction models on IOTA. So they're they're they've been pretty close, pretty accurate actually. So all the way since May, pretty much in alignment. Then they have IOTA going all the way till 46, 47 cents, then kind of going sideways. They they aren't really predicting any kind of major crash or pullback. So yeah, I mean models are also pretty optimistic on 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 this coin. So tell us what you think. Are, are you also optimistic on, on IOTA? Do you think IOTA can bounce back? Do you think this project is, is done for? Uh, tell us down in the comments below. All right, going on to the next question. So once again, um, we're taking questions from Mentim now. Um, we have over 70 questions, so don't think we'll be, be, be able to get to all the questions. Uh, but if we don't get to your question, uh, definitely do post the question on our forum. Just go to forum.tokenmetrics.com. That's forum.tokenmetrics.com. It's, it's been getting more and more active. So thank you to Crypto Family who's been going there to join the forum. Uh, let me pull it up here on my screen. All right. so we have any questions that you, we aren't able to get to on the live stream, go post them on the forum and the community can go there and, and help you answer those questions, whether it's a trading qu and TA question, investing question, uh, question on code reviews, or anything in general, anything crypto token related, go to the forum and ask the question there. Okay? All right, so, okay, so this is on Neo. Neo TA from two years ago has just about broken out. Every coin in this space says they'll do a NEO, but is NEO going to pull a NEO on this breakout? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by NEO pulling a NEO on this breakout. Do you mean like back in 2017 when it just kind of shot up out of nowhere? Um, but I mean, possibly. Uh, Bill, what's your take with, uh, with NEO? Okay, so NEO helped me get a theme started. Okay, so the answer to, I think this guy's asking is, can this go up a lot quickly? And the answer is yes. Uh, sort of the bottom formation that Neo has made was a diamond. It's kind of unusual that a bottom would look like a diamond. Mm -hmm. Now diamonds, we haven't talked much about it. Diamonds are ridiculously powerful. When you see a diamond in equities, that's that's when equities have their brief moments of acting like crypto. They just explode. Okay. Now there's a couple different ways it can happen, but in this way, it just looks like Neo just exited the diamond and went green. Okay. And again, look at the speed of the decline over here. Right? Yeah. It fell words, off a cliff. <laughs> it just fell off a cliff. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it fell off a cliff, it can be a rocket ship the other way. So, you know, Neo might go on a nice rally. If the diamond is correct, Neo could go to 24. Okay. If the whole market just explodes, right. Cause we were, we were talking about like Binance earlier, right. Like, can you imagine what happens at, at a place like either Binance or Coinbase? If some of these bigger cap coins like Neo start, doing a one X like I know one X is, is boring on Uniswap. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it for, for the broader crypto market for big coins to do a one X, right? Like if I told That's you Ethereum big. was going at 800 or 900, that would sound very exciting. Yeah. However, when I say other big coins would do a one X, everyone's like, Oh my God, please stop it. Right. But it's the same thing. So can Neo do a Neo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get in the way. I mean, Bitcoin could ruin the whole show, but then again, Bitcoin might take the Neos and the Zcash is higher. Yeah. Yeah. Well said, Bill. Um, let me also pull up Neo here on my end and see what, what our models say. Cause Neo, 
early on this year was performing pretty well. Um, and then also the, with the, the hype around Neo launching their new version, right? Let me let me take a look here. Yeah, so the models, yeah, they have been kind of tough to, to kind of analyze Neo early on. But all the way since basically mid-July, uh, Neo kind of broke out and was trading higher than our models predicted. And in general, though, they have been kind of following the same trend, right? So now our models think Neo's pretty much going to go sideways for most of the month and possibly decline. But I, I mean, I, I think as Bill mentioned, if, if alts keep on rallying and there's a melt up, anything is possible, right? So anything is possible with uh, with Neo. Okay, wow, we have some some heavy tippers here. Uh, thank you, Jarek. Jarek wants us to take a look at Litecoin. Thank you for the super chat. Okay, so just give us a second as we pull that up. I think we covered Litecoin last week as well, uh, but uh, it seems there's there's more interest in Litecoin again. Right, Litecoin just won't go away. Yeah, you know, and I, I've been watching this because I, I, you know, I, truthfully, I I missed the first part of this. Okay, so this is the theme where Litecoin does what other coins have done, where they get to a resistance point, they press against it, okay, and then. It goes through the resistance and Litecoin has the added twist of A, no one likes it, which probably means B, <laughs> no one owns it. Okay. And in bull markets, the stuff that goes up the most is frequently the stuff that no one owns. So, you know, Litecoin could go to 80 easily because that's where it was in March. I mean, <laughs> if I said to you, X coin should unwind at a minimum. Any coin should unwind the disaster from March. You would say, well, of course. So that creates a lot of upside in Litecoin. Now, there's one more thing. One of the primary uses of Litecoin is that it is a big leading indicator for big brother Bitcoin. Okay. So back to this idea of active portfolio management you got a lot of coins that are going to be up 20 percent or 40 percent by the time we get off this phone call or this video right mm -hmm. yeah so if litecoin's up 10 percent, you got to watch out for big brother following right behind so please stay with the trend and please don't be a pig right make yeah. sure you get some money in your pocket yeah, absolutely. Especially if Litecoin is moving higher, because it's it, literally it's a perfect leading indicator for Bitcoin. It has been. So basically, target could be as high as eighty dollars, uh, Jared. It could be, right? So in, in terms of profit taking levels, I mean that's definitely up to you, Jared. We can't tell you what to do, but I mean eighty dollars, as Bill mentioned, is is a good target. And if it gets there, I mean taking profits or his helps, right? Nobody got fired taking profits. All right. Uh, thank you, Bill. And thank you, Jack, for that uh, tip. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Okay, unfortunately, we can't really talk, uh, do in-depth reviews just due to the time we have. So any project reviews we will have to kind of skip. Okay, sorry, I'm just going through these questions trying to find a good one. Okay, so here's one. Is it possible for Polkadot to have more utility than Ethereum? Uh, so, very good question. With Polkadot kind of launching and their token coming out this month, I believe the token is going to be unlocked and transferable on the 18th right now we're, right now it's the 16th so i mean i think short answer 
yes, right? Anything is possible in crypto. <laughs> That's one thing we've learned. Anything is possible. I mean, just, just, I mean, because if, if you had told me when I invested in the private sale of Chainlink back in 2017, that Chainlink would be top 10, top five project. I mean, even even though I was bullish, I was an, I was not that bullish. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, so anything is definitely possible in crypto. Now, Polkadot does have great technology. I mean, the, the, the tech they have is top five. I mean, possibly maybe even top, I would say top five, top 10. Just based purely on technology, the use case is also a very big use case, right? They're, they're, they're trying to be to be the internet of blockchains, to connect other blockchains, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Happy Ledger, all these other blockchains and have them talk to each other and really build a network of blockchains. That's that's probably the biggest use case in crypto and, and, and the blockchain space, because if you can get Bitcoin and Ethereum to talk to each other and be able to transfer value across both blockchains, that is huge, right? So I can. That's why there's definitely lots of hype. Um, they they do have other projects also trying to to uh, to build the same thing, such as Cosmos, Icon. But quite frankly, Polkadot is probably they, they probably have the best chance of just achieving that goal, right? They have Gavin Wood, former co-founder of of uh, Ethereum, so having his expertise, then having all the people building on top of uh, Polkadot. I think it's definitely one to keep an eye on. Now, will it ever surpass Ethereum in the long run? That still remains to be seen. But if they achieve what they want to achieve, then I think that would be the case. Because if a blockchain that can talk to both Ethereum and Bitcoin, to me, would be more valuable than a blockchain that, that just runs Ethereum. Uh, Bill, uh, any comments on that? Certainly. So one of the things that's good about token metrics is that I can learn something new every day from customers and colleagues. I got this colleague mm -hmm. and he shared his screen. This is about three weeks ago. And this guy gets right to the point and he's like, let me tell you something about Polkadot and all the stuff that they're going to build on top of Polkadot for DeFi. <laughs> and I got up from my chair and I said, oh my God. If I missed Ethereum like way back when, like way back when, am I going to get or are we going to get another shot at another like Ethereum type platform coming right out of the gate with Polkadot, right? Like how fast is it going to take for Polkadot to take advantage of DeFi or how fast is it going to take for people to go, you know what? Ethereum 2.0 is delayed. And that's not a terrible thing because we have polka dot, right? I, I, I mean, I don't have to know. I don't know the tech details. I just know from listening to this particular person, my mm -hmm. conclusion was, you know, I'm not going to cry my beer about Ethereum 2.0 not being here. Now, what mm -hmm. does that translate to into the value of polka dot? I'm almost afraid to ask. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm almost afraid to see how people are going to behave. I mean, you know, you think people are going crazy over Chainlink. If the polka dot story accelerates once it comes yeah. out, right? Yeah. Especially after what I learned, you know, from Frank from token from working at token metrics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, well said. I think polka dot could be the next chain link type hype because when they launch this month, basically in, in in a few days, and tokens will be transferable. Every exchange will list them, and, and I think. Once people start seeing what they're building for DeFi on Polkadot, that will be interoperable. That's that's like the holy grail. If you can make DeFi interoperable across multiple blockchains, I mean, like, uh, shut up and take my money. <laughs> shut up and take my money. As you say, right? I mean, because DeFi is already hyped up. If you add interoperability to DeFi, it's like. Shut up and take my money. Right. Obviously, not financial advice, but definitely keep an eye out on Polkadot. Uh, we also mentioned uh, a while back about PokuSwap. Right. PokuSwap is basically building a DEX for Polkadot and their ecosystem that lets lets you really peer to peer swap and, and trade across different blockchains and different assets. So timeline for for their launch. From talking to their CEO, uh, they mentioned probably Q4, Q1. 
so there's still some time before it launches but it's also from the same company that launched sora blockchain which has already done a 50x so people because in order to partake in their dex uh, you also have to have the x o the x o r basically the the token on their blockchain to partake in that so so anyway uh, the, the team is 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 pretty good team we think uh, definitely keep an eye an eye on that i, I think polka dot definitely has room to grow uh, whether it will surpass the utility of ethereum if they achieve what they want to achieve i think it's definitely possible but i mean we also can't really completely push ethereum aside right because ethereum is ethereum right but i think polka dot is the best competitor that has come around to compete with ethereum in a while so definitely keep an eye on that project so tell us what you think uh, are you bullish on polka dot uh, do you think polka dot can compete with ethereum do you think it will surpass the utility of ethereum or do you think ethereum will keep on being ethereum and keep on having the the top spot tell us what you think down in the comments below okay uh, great question there let's move on to the next one okay uh this is also a good question great stuff thank you guys seeing as to how high the fees on uniswap are is it worth investing anything less than a thousand dollars uh very good question uh i would say um in general if you're investing or trading on on kind of DeFi platforms or protocols having a, a low amount of capital is not recommended because the fees will just eat away right so for example if you're if you have one thousand dollars uh, actually let me pull it up here let's say you want to buy a die uh, actually, actually yeah let's say you have ether sorry just give me a second i'm trying to make the trade here so let's say you have ether and you're trying to convert that to some other uh some other cryptocurrency right how, how what will your fees be all right so looking at this right so in this example uh, in my test wallet uh to convert 10 ether to die this will basically be actually if you have this let's do 2.5 yeah basically yeah so two, let's do 2.35 eth which is about a grand so the price impact here is small but they do charge you liquidity fees but it's really the transaction fees from metamask and just the ethereum blockchain that's where that's where they get you right because if, if i go and try to swap this transaction um my ledger is not connected to it so it's not gonna work per se so this is about five dollars 81 cents in gas right so that's that's how much they would charge in gas right so uh, let me share my screen so you guys can see that right so in terms of percent wise right so we have 581 out of pretty much a thousand so i mean in this case it's, it's not too much right so i think trading wise is possible but if you're doing other stuff such as yield farming or liquidity pools that's where it really kind of becomes an, an issue right so for example um if, let's say i want to add eth to what do i have here let me let me try to add eth so let's, let's do that same amount 2.35 eth to a liquidity pool for let's say for for die okay in this case i guess it's not working anyway but anyway long story short uh definitely be cautious of the fit of the transaction fees uh, i know a workaround people were using was to use basically mobile apps but it, because with some mobile apps as a way to kind of onboard people into their app they were covering the transaction fees and people were basically kind of saving a bunch of money but even now i i believe it was 
was it Dharma? I don't think it was Dharma. I think it was some some other wallet app. Um, actually, I think I do have them here somewhere on my phone. Maybe not. Uh, not Dharma. I, th I think it was some other one. But in general, they, basically this week they canceled those uh, paying transaction fees. So now people have to cover them. Basically, they're, they're saying that fees were too expensive now and it makes no sense from a business standpoint to cover them for users. So now people have to cover their own fees. So... I definitely be cautious when when having to, to pay transaction fees in DeFi. Uh, I think that's probably the only thing that's preventing DeFi from blowing up. People right right now, DeFi is really a playground for whales. Whales really get the most benefit from from DeFi. Uh, Bill, um, any comments? Certainly. So if you're in an environment where you're getting charged high fees, okay, perhaps. The best use of a thousand dollars is as a learning experience. Now, I understand the environment that we're in. People need to make money. People don't can't afford to waste money. But if it was a choice between sitting on the sidelines with the thousand dollars or trying to get involved, pay the fees so you can learn. Everybody bought their first high fee crypto via Coinbase, maybe in the US, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody paid a big fee to get started. So don't not get started. You know, obviously if you, you know, you're not gonna be able to do the things the whales can do, but don't let $20 keep you from learning what could be something huge over the next two years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Joe. Yeah, so the wallet's name was Argent. So Argent is not paying anymore. Uh, I mean, because with me, uh, actually, last night, uh, I did begin adding some liquidity to liquidity pools. So uh, a cool app I definitely highly encourage everybody checks out. Uh, actually, there are several DeFi apps, but the ones I really liked, um, Zapper.fi is, is one I highly encourage people go check out. Uh, it basically, it's kind of like... Um, how do I call it? Um, I'm not sure I want to sh show this. Uh, how do I just give me one second? Let me see if I can disconnect my wallet. Okay. I guess, I guess not. <laughs> just don't want to put everything I have in DeFi on the live stream, <laughs> but in, in general, uh, here, let me see if I can log out. Why isn't this? Okay, here we go. All right, so this lets you manage your DeFi assets. So you, you can go to the site and it will pull up basically all the liquidity pools. You just put in what token you want. So for example, I'm I'm part of the Wi-Fi liquidity pool. I'm part of the ALF liquidity pool. I'm part of the Chainlink pool as well. So this kind of basically the way it works is you you take let's say 10 ether and it, it basically cuts that in half it it, 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 it it takes five ether buys chain link takes the other ether I mean, and puts it in the in in the pool and you basically get a share of the transaction fees so it's kind of a a good way to kind of hedge and earn some extra income um, definitely not for everybody definitely make sure the the returns make sense but i think it's definitely worth checking out because it could be a way to possibly uh, earn earn interest and just earn some profits so for example let me take a look here right okay yeah so for example let's say you you have um let's say you have balancer and you want to deposit that you just come here search for balancer um and it shows you all the different pools it shows you the ROI as well, right? It also shows you the in, in permanent loss as well to make sure that it's in profit because in permanent loss is definitely something to, to keep an eye on when partaking in uh, in, in pools, right? So balancer and the WETH pool, ROI for this month is 10%, but in terms of the net ROI, it's only been 0.23%. So basically you've only made this difference as opposed to just holding one single asset. Um, but let's say, we're talking to people like let's say uma right let's say you, you have some uma 
and you're bullish on that and you want to add, add that to a pool well right now in the last one month it's not been too profitable so it probably does not make sense but I did actually what I did is this if you just come here and just sort by ROI so this shows you the the pools that have the most ROI right so here we have Metastable, Acropolis, uh, Auk, which is Octus, which is actually one of our picks for interesting DeFi projects to keep a, keep an eye on for this month that we sent to our private uh, customers. Um, we have Balancer here as well, so definitely check out the site. Worth, I think if you if you're in DeFi, this is definitely worth bookmarking. One other site uh, I've also kind of been dabbling with is Zerion. Um, let me. Their site is zerion.io. So these sites are kind of like DeFi money management uh, accounts, right? So if if you want to kind of, because the the downside with DeFi at the moment is if you want to use several different protocols, you have to go to several different sites and learn how to use all of them. So these these DeFi management platforms could basically let you interact with all, all, all these different different protocols at the same time without having to really learn anything new right so for for instance uh let me see what let's say somebody wants to looks, looks like it's not loading properly okay i, I guess that's not going to work uh, as i would have hoped okay but but in general i highly encourage you check out uh these platforms right so zerion.io is, is the is the site here right so here for example they have a list of different assets under coinbase review they have assets for yield farming right so if you want to kind of uh, partake in any of the of this definitely that does make sense to check this out now uh, that being said uh if there are any DeFi apps we've missed uh definitely be sure to tell us down in the comments below okay uh back to the ama Okay, all right. Uh, next question: With the bug on on the DeFi project Yam, do you see the DeFi bubble ending soon? Uh, uh, no. no, I mean, kind of based on what Bill said. Bill says uh, I'll still have lots of room to grow. Um, so until Bitcoin begins to rally, uh, I don't don't think we can say that DeFi bubble is ending anytime soon. Uh, Bill, your take. Okay, here's how I would talk about the DeFi bubble, right? If something's up 25% in one day, like we've got some of that today in DeFi, you know, that can be a way to take some money, right? Because things consolidate. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think one project failing is actually a good thing because now every other project that comes out is going to probably be more thorough because I would imagine Uncle Sam is going to take a look at who failed. Okay. Yeah. So it's an incentive for everyone else to be more careful. All right. So there's the basic idea of managing your P&L and profit taking. And there's also the idea that in innovation, in innovation phases, mistakes have to get made. How can we learn if we don't make mistakes as long as it doesn't blow up the financial system? And again, as a reminder, DeFi at 9 billion, that looks really huge. Except, yeah. you know, the Fed prints 9 billion before they're done with their morning meeting at 7 a.m. <laughs> so it's not that much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I think to kind of add on to that, right? So your, your question in terms of, is the DeFi bubble ending anytime soon? I mean, kind of as Bill mentioned, I don't really see this ending soon. I mean, yes, there'll be some corrections, but I think it's something that should be expected. I don't think it's something that should cause panic uh, until really uh, Bitcoin starts to cause alts to bleed. But if you're up and you're taking profits, then everything should be good. Now, in terms of what happened with Yam, so I myself also, as an experiment, did partake in yam farming because i had chain link and they basically had the, the link marine garden 
So anybody who, who basically had link tokens could earn extra interest, right? And I have, I have, a, I have a, so a person in our network was basically making a killing. <laughs> I mean, so I would say this is one of the value adds of the private network and just kind of being in the professional plan. So literally this person woke up in the morning and said, guys, I'm making like 3% a day on, on just farming my Bitcoin with Yam. And as soon as he said that, within a few hours, I was on Yam putting my chain link. <laughs> and, and to me, honestly, that was the first time I've really kind of done yield farming, right? To me, it was just an experiment because I, I didn't believe in buying the token. I think people who buy who, who people who buy the token, that's that's where you basically get wrecked, right? Because it ended up crashing from market cap of over sixty million to I think almost close to zero, right? Due to the bug. But if you're passively earning it, it's basically like an airdrop, right? So if you just stake your tokens and you yield farm and you earn it that way passively, whether it goes to zero or nothing, you aren't going to be as wrecked as somebody who's actually buying it on a DEX or an exchange and is spending their own money to buy it, right? Because the only thing, the only expenses we have from farming it is just the transaction cost from, from, from the Ethereum blockchain. Right. So to me, it was really just kind of an experiment. Uh, the team has mentioned they do plan to launch a, a, a V2, basically version two, and then a version three to migrate people over. So it looks like it is going to come back. Uh, so definitely, I, I think they've proven that they can create a community very quickly. They've proven that there's lots of interest and hype around it. So I think once they launch that third version and they fix all the bugs, I think it would definitely come back again. Right, but I think if you're in DeFi, buying most of uh, of these DeFi tokens doesn't really make sense. If, for example, CRV Curve Token, it's a project we're very bullish on. Technology is great, everything is great, but even that, I myself would, would not buy at this point in time, just due to the valuation and the market cap being very very high. But if you're passively earning it from participating in the protocol, then I think to me that makes more sense. Right, so that's kind of a way to hedge against any possible downside risk. With that being said, tell us what you think. Uh, do you think the DeFi bubble is ending anytime soon? Or do you think this is just beginning? Tell us down in the comments below. All right, let's go on to the next question. Okay, this is about ETH 2.0. Unfortunately, we, uh, we can't really answer this question. The question is, what are the odds from zero to hundred percent that we get ETH 2.0 before end of the year. Um, not to be a bore, but I'll just say 50% because <laughs> uh, because we don't really know. Okay, uh, let me let me see if we can find. Let's keep out of politics for now. Uh, no information on Definity token release, unfortunately. Uh, next question. Um, okay. Okay, we just posted a video on Anchor today, uh, but what we could do is we could do TA on on Ren. So the person is asking, what do we think of Anchor and Ren? So uh, Bill, let's pull up Ren protocol. We, we haven't covered that in a while, so I think that will be good to cover. And then let me also look it up here on my end in terms of the the price predictions. Okay, Ren coming up. So Ren is definitely one of the interesting DeFi projects to keep an eye on. Uh, I, I know Diego, who's watching the stream, he's he's very very bullish on Ren. He's actually, I believe, has three nodes on Ren protocol. Uh, so he's been talking about it, basically to the moon and beyond. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Bill. Okay, so here's Ren, uh, and here are, I guess we can call them the moon lines, <laughs> right? So. Ren around 42 cents. Um, I guess one of the things that these DeFi coins like to do is that they like to kind of overshoot their technical levels. So this to me looks like, you know, some sort of like, we always talk about if something's up 20% in one day, take the money, right? Now, 
I know I've said that, so that doesn't make for very interesting TV. So what I will say is that if Ren does take out 42 cents, it can go to 55. Okay. But with a lot of these DeFi tokens, like I said, you know, one thing I will say about the Ren chart, everyone's going to see the big green area and go, wow, look at that. But one of the things that's really, really interesting to me about Ren, I'm actually going to switch to a daily, is that Ren actually consolidated. You were able to buy dips. You were able to buy dips in Ren as early as yesterday or two days ago, right? You know, this didn't necessarily look like auto moon. Like once mm -hmm. it got above 28 cents, yes. But these DeFi tokens have been in buys on dips and consolidations, which is very, very healthy, right? Because what does that allow you to do? It allows you to have it go up 20%, put the money in your pocket, go out to dinner, <laughs> pat yourself on the back, and then come back later and say, hey, you know, Diego's got three nodes. What, do you, what else do you need to know? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you need to know? So it's like, if there's a dip, you take advantage of the dip. And I watch this thing every day. I go, I go, oh my God, this looks terrible. And then it comes, it comes right back. Right. And so there's somebody down there, right. Going, yeah, this is a long-term idea. So there's a difference, right? If it's up 20% in one day, is it going to go up another 20% tomorrow? Okay. I would say no, because that's been the pattern the whole time, right? If something's up or down 25% in one day, that's an opportunity to take your money. Yeah. So, you know, love, love DeFi. You know, I, I think Ren is actually following Kava, right? Cause Kava has got that partnership with Binance and that sort of feeds on speculation. I also think Ren is doing well because the market is slowly figuring out where the high quality plays are in DeFi jokes aside. And I think mm -hmm. Ren is going to be one of those high quality plays. So manage PL, but I think the fundamental reality, and you know, they're starting to sort the uh, you know, kind of like the men from the boys, if you follow me. Yeah, yeah. because uh, even looking here at our price prediction models for, for Ren, they've they've been fairly accurate. So pretty much moving in alignment. Uh, then Ren pretty much, as Bill mentioned, just kind of broke off and has even exceeded our models. It's because now it's it's basically been around 39, 40 cents. Our models had it basically going to about 30 and then kind of going sideways. And so let, let's give it a few days for then the models will adjust kind of with, with, with new pricing data. But yeah, I mean, Ren has really kind of been through the roof, essentially. So tell us what you think. Uh, are you bullish on Ren? Do you think there's more upside? Do you think it can keep on going higher or do you, do you think there are other projects out there that have more upside? Tell us what you think down in the comments below. All right, so let's check in with our audience and see how we're doing. Uh, be sure to smash the like buttons wherever you are. Subscribe, turn on, turn on alerts. Okay. Uh, Rodrigo says, I bought rent two days ago, um, up 23.7%. That's awesome. What's up, Mateo? And Mateo says a working product that actually mints BTC in a decentralized manner. Ren also has true interoperability. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, James says if nobody buys the DeFi tokens you put in yielding, isn't it pointless to do it? Uh, yes, right. I mean, so whatever your yield farming, you definitely want to make sure there's a market for it. And for CRV, there definitely is a market. Uh, see, they launched, they have almost a billion dollars locked up. Uh, for yams, uh, there was a market for two days, then the market crashed because of the, the bug. But I, I think once once they migrate over, I think those same people who liked it before will come back, and I think the market will come back again. Um, so... Mr. Bitcoin says DeFi is not ending. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that would be great. All right, so... Yes, Gavin Wood has the inside workings on ETH. He has seen it seen it all. 
yeah, I mean, he's he basically built ETH, right? He was he was part of the dev team, so he, he basically knows how to how to build a better Ethereum, possibly, right? If if anybody can do it, uh, it's definitely him. Okay, next question: How long does still scoring take, and can any of the info be considered while it is still being scored, such as price predictions? Yes, yeah. So price predictions. Price predictions can definitely be used. Still scoring is really just for fundamentals and technology review. So in terms of technical analysis and price predictions, yes, it can be used. It's, it's really just for kind of the fundamentals and the, and the technology because either there isn't an, enough information out there to really kind of give a full review or maybe it was just, uh, honestly, some, sometimes it's, it's just a bad project where kind of like through the review we just kind of give up on it because it's it's just going to be close to zero <laughs> right uh but then sometimes it's just because we're still actually going through and doing the review so uh, we do plan to maybe kind of do a, bit, a better job of categorizing different projects i know some people have said maybe not even show projects that are still being scored now uh, so we, we're definitely open to feedback so tell us what you think uh, either in, in the comments down below or in our telegram group or on the forum okay okay uh, unfortunately we can't really do reviews of products just due to the time we have okay so next pro next project what do your token metrics say, say about the future of RSR and that's reserve rights so this actually was one of the coins in our indices. This was this was the biggest gainer in the weekly indices, uh, weekly price prediction index. Uh, let me just see if I can pull it up. So reserve rights is up one hundred one percent, I believe. Uh, if, if if this is right, then uh, let's also have Bill pull up the the TA. But if I pull up the price prediction model. On token metrics, uh, just give me a second. It's it's loading here. But I mean, I, I think the prediction should be pretty bullish because this was in the weekly uh, list. Okay. All right. So this is so the accuracy for this has been pretty pretty good in the high eighties, low nineties. It's pretty much been in alignment all the way since May. Then it slowly broke off uh, around end of July. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so our models have it going all the way possibly till 26, 27, actually, no, sorry, to 2.7 and 2.8 cents, basically slightly beneath 3 cents. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so models are bullish on this. Uh, then, Bill? Let's see what uh, the, the TS says. Okay, coming up. Okay, okay, so this is reserve rights versus tether. Okay. Hmm. Now, with these moon lines, just so you know, uh, <laughs> they they get fitted. They're like shoes. You, you yeah. try them on, mm -hmm. and I adjust the lines based on sort of where they've worked in the past. And then I assume that they'll work in the future. So what you can see is where this black arrow was, that was kind of the launch point for reserve, right? It was like right on top of the line. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting that, you know, reserve rights has just kind of gone to one of the bigger lines, yeah. right? It's Straight just, through. Once it goes, w w once it goes through one set, it goes right to the other, right? Hence that's why they're moon lines. Okay. Now, a lot of times when you get these kind of moves, okay, you do get some form of consolidation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, the best time to take your money is when it's up huge. Because if it's up like this and Bitcoin went to 13,000 tomorrow, you would probably be upset, right? <laughs> so yeah. giant green candles are awesome, right? We want everybody to have them. Um, just manage your PL accordingly. Yeah, to take profits, lock in those profits, but and then buy yourself 
and some nice things. <laughs> Tell us what you think of, of, about reserve rights down in the comments below. Okay, all right. Let's go on to the next question. Okay, uh, next question. Just joined professional plan. How do I get plugged into the community? Uh, I would say check your email. Uh, everybody who joins gets an email that asks you to, to kind of uh, contact the, the customer success team. So just respond back to the email. Um, make, make sure the email from Tokenmetrics didn't go to your spam folder. Um, then, yeah, so just check the email. If, you, if, for, if for some reason you didn't get an email, then just contact the, the team on the chat. So if you can just go to our site, let me take, let me show you. So just down here, open up the chat, then just contact our team, then our team will take care of it, okay? But welcome to the to the token metrics professional plan. We just landed on the moon and the lab. Welcome to the family. Okay. All right. Um back to the to the AMA. Okay, and then she also just uh Yeah, I think uh she just gave me her telegram. Let me pull it up here real quick so I don't Yeah, that's not working for me. Maybe your ID is not working. Okay, anyway. Uh, next question. Uh, we've already covered EWT. Uh, do you see another Oracle project becoming the Samsung to Chainlinx Apple? Okay, so do we see it basically competition for Chainlink in terms of the Oracle space? I, I think we kind of have beaten this to death <laughs> with, with the last live stream and basically all the clips we posted on the Tokenmetrics channel. Uh, I highly encourage you to go subscribe at youtube.com slash Tokenmetrics if you haven't already. Basically the oracles we, we covered were, the, the, the major one is Band. Band. Then we, we also had, I think, a DeFi Oracle video where we covered Teller and all the others, uh, DIA, DI, I think it's called, and some others. I mean, Oracle. The Oracle space is 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 hot, right? Anything Oracle now is basically pumping. Now, will they? Yeah, I mean, I think Band and Chainlink are really the one and two right now, and I, and maybe third is probably Teller, right? Uh, so I, I, that's kind of what it looks like. But if if we missed any other any other Oracle, uh, tell us down in the comments below. Okay, let's go on to the next one. UTK coin, that one I've not heard of. Okay, right, let's keep politics out of it. Okay, so uh, here's one we can cover. Is it a good time to get into OXT? So that is Orchid Protocol, I believe. Um, they're on Coinbase. So actually, this this is a project we do have on Tokenmetrics. Uh, and the technology is... It's pretty good, I believe, because uh, Paresh did look at it, and so, and and I know it's been performing fairly well uh, in the last week or so. Yeah, I see it's up over sixty-two percent. Wow. I mean, I, I guess that that Coinbase uh, effect. So now, if we just kind of go to the price predictions on our site, pretty much it was flat. Uh, so kind of like I think as Bill says, uh, it was building a base, and then it just took off, right? The wider the base, the higher interface, uh, as Bill says. <laughs> uh, then the models kind of have it going sideways at around 56 cents. But right now it's hovering way above that at around 69 cents or so. So, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely just taken off. Then Bill? Okay, coming up. Okay. So, you know, these, these charts are funny, right? <laughs> um, when you get to an even number, like a dollar, and that also happens to be where there was one of these GAN lines, okay, you're going to get a natural stopping point there, right? So anybody who bought this for, you know, not a lot is going to be selling on a move up to a dollar Particularly, you know, if it's listed on Coinbase, a lot of times what people think is, you know, that's it for a while, 
In other words, once it's listed on Coinbase, there's always, or, or a big exchange, there's usually like a digestion or a consolidation period, right? So that consolidation period could be, you know, like with Compound, that was kind of awful what happened, okay? In other projects, the consolidation periods can last two to three days. I just don't know. In that particular case, you know, at an even number, like a dollar, I mean, if you bought it for 20 cents and it went to a dollar, what should you do? I'll take profits. <laughs> I mean, right. yeah. Okay, so so I see uh, CB9 Kravitz says, I'm going to watch the OXT Rocket Moon. I missed that ride. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you for chiming in. But yeah, I mean, for anybody who's making money on that, congratulations. Uh, definitely do take some profits. Okay, all right. So back to the AMA. All right, so... This, this is definitely a coin I like. <laughs> so how high is Helium going? So that's Helium Network. Uh, so I have been mining that. I mean, first of all, for anybody who's holding Helium, congratulations. Uh, Helium has is now over a dollar. I, I, and depending on when you got in, Helium, you, you, you're probably up five, five to 10x. So that's like our first like 10x and this quarter or, or even this year for some I mean so I mean I I've not sold any yet I'm basically in it long term uh, on the downside though they did launch their data credits so now I'm not really earning anything with my mining so from going through their discord channel my understanding is because now they have kind of this two token model with the data credits and the HNT token if you don't have any other hotspots nearby you basically will earn even less so uh, i went from earning like about um actually i can pull it up here don't i don't want to misspeak because um, quite frankly i was pretty pissed off <laughs> but i mean the price is going up so i i can't complain too much because my my rewards shrank to basically 0 0.02 per per reward and that, that that's about like seven a, a a day or so. In the past, I was getting as much as as point five. So from point five, seven times a day or so, I think, to point zero two. I mean, I'm definitely not a happy camper, but I mean the price is going up. But at this point, I think really the only Thing for me to do is just accumulate on exchanges unfortunately with that being said uh to you bill okay so now this is something that i haven't seen on moonline charts yet this four hour helium mm -hmm. this was a monster effort by the bulls to break out here over say the last two days. Mm -hmm. So what I think is happening in helium is I think it's gonna go back and forth in a big range. Because as Ian said, there's news to digest, okay? But the fact that they made a run at that line like twice and they ran at it hard and failed, okay? Mm -hmm. Means that there are probably more unhappy campers out there about this particular instrument, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say, given that, you know, just manage your P&L accordingly. If you made money and you were in it for sort of the easy money, then the easy money has been made. If you want to hodl, that's great, but you're probably just going to have to look at a consolidation period. Now, most consolidation periods in some of these coins, honestly, I've been watching them and they look really awkward. Like the first couple I looked at, I was like, Ooh, this is not good. But mm -hmm. then the thing turned around and just started going back up again, right? So the uglier the consolidation, if there's FUD or people are unhappy, if it doesn't crack, it's probably going back up again. Now, I, I, I don't have the crystal ball for that particular coin, but I'm just giving you some information about the nature of the consolidations, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. when they're ugly, even though they, they look ugly going sideways, but if they don't collapse, like like in Ren, it turns around and goes back up again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me actually pull it up here in Token Metrics. 
Uh, I'm not sure if we have price predictions uh, on this with, with good accuracy. Let me just take a look and see what it says. Okay. Okay. So looks like we kind of do. All right. So yeah. So the price prediction models were pretty much in alignment all the way since June. And then it took off. So here it basically kind of pulled back, kind of as Bill mentioned. Uh, but the mo the model is actually pretty bullish. They have it going all the way to two dollars forty cents. So yeah. But but kind of with the pullback, this will have to kind of. Be, re be reassessed. So probably give it a few days for the models to kind of adapt because the models are rolling one month prediction. So every 30 days out. So with this new kind of correction, probably in two days or so, this will get factored into the prediction for the for the next one month. But I mean, with their, their possible, possible review to be added onto Coinbase, I think that definitely can be a huge catalyst, right? Uh, but I mean, quite frankly, uh, at this point, mining for me does not make much sense, and I'm, I want to buy on exchanges, but to buy on exchanges, I would hope for a bigger pullback. <laughs> so if anything, I mean, because actually, I'm pissed actually, all right, because I wanted to market buy on on Bialyxy when it was 25 cents, but I, I try to catch the dip. So I bought a few at 25 cents. Then I had buy orders at 20, at 15, and at 10 cents, I, I think. But it just kept on going, <laughs> basically. And I basically only got like about a third of how much I wanted to buy on exchanges. So I'm still, I'm, I'm pretty pissed. And I thought it would come back down to earth, but it's, it just kept on going. But either way, I mean, I think it probably does not make too much sense because if I'm in it long term, so if I try to kind of time that the entry points but either way i mean it's it's it's, it's been a great investment this year so congrats to any, anybody who's made money on it okay all right let's check in with our audience and see how we're doing once those orders are filled it's going to keep growing fast okay uh put a sell for 100k for a dollar seventy installed the growth. Helium already floated in to the moon on a blimp. <laughs> yes, it did. I mean, and I mean, quite frankly, I mean, sometimes it makes sense to just market buy because <laughs> sometimes trying to to kind of be too perfect uh, can, can come back to hurt you. Okay, uh, let's see what else. Uh, thank you, Diego. Uh, good words. Uh, have you looked at Ocean? Um, we, we've done a review on it, uh, but I don't think it's been fully added to the site yet. Um, how do I start a plan as a newbie? Uh, go to tokenmetrics.com and sign up. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We also have videos on our channel that kind of walk you through. Then also when you sign up, we give you some tutorials. How often does the TA gauge update? Is it live? Uh, it's not live. It updates every, I would say every, about every six hours or so. So yeah, so I would say the ratings update about every six hours. Uh, worst case, uh, every 24 hours, but typically every six hours, kind of based on the price movements and the price action. I uh, just want to say thanks for all the value you bring to this community. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cryptos. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, Crypto family in the house, thank you for for, for being being here every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern time to watch the live streams with with us. We definitely enjoy having you. Okay. All right. Um let's let's go back to the to the AMA. Okay. Is there a way to search for micro caps sub 10 million on token metrics? I can't find it. Uh, yes, there is. So if you go to tokenmetrics.com, um, let me so go to data ratings. This brings you here, right? Then you just add a filter. Oh, actually, sorry. Yeah, okay, I see. Okay, so all right. So we used to have a market cap uh, column, but we did actually remove that to add um, to add the predicted 
the price predictions, right? So because people were asking for price predictions. So for example, people want to know what coin is going to go up, right? Based on the next one month, right? So being able to kind of ha give them price predictions directly on here. Okay, but okay, I'll, 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 I'll check with our team. I think it might, it might make sense for us to add it back here because we thought because people had the, the rank here, right? So it, it didn't really matter too much, but it looks like people still do want to be able to filter based on market cap. So maybe we replace market cap rank with market cap. So that's something our team will, will, will check into. Uh, definitely tell us in the comments if you, uh, if you think it makes sense to add market cap column back. Okay, all right, uh, going on. We can we kind of covered Ren. All right, I think I, I do think Ren can be big. Okay, so here's a question for Bill. Uh, hi, Bill and Ian. Can you take a look at Toto two, Toto crypto market cap minus B two C? Okay, I think we kind of covered this, right? The altcoin market cap. That's the same one you looked at, Bill. Uh, it's yes, it's it's similar. Um, you know this this question is uh, you know this person is definitely after my own heart with this. <laughs> um, you know, so if you look at market cap excluding Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's broken out of this gigantic downward sloping wedge, right? What's a downward sloping wedge? It's a basketball underwater, okay? And this is sort of adds fuel to the to the fire of that altcoin market cap chart, right? Because once you let go of that basketball, okay, that basketball flies not only to the top of the water, but out of the water. And I don't see why this can't go back to where it was in June of 2018. Because again, that, that's, that, that's what the big picture looks like, just like the altcoin chart, right? So you're like, oh my God, this is up so much. No, not really. <laughs> not really. That's, that's where, you know, your ethers... You know, possibly your Litecoins, your Cardanos, your Stellars, your Cosmos. You know, God only knows what Chainlink could do. You know, if that chart is proves prophetic, right? It just adds to the idea that coins other than Bitcoin can go up so much. It's actually hard to talk about it, right? It's hard mm -hmm. to come out and say, you know altcoins as in coins other than bitcoin not necessarily the super small ones right so remember that you know the bigger altcoins haven't even started rallying yet that's the message of that chart the big altcoins have not started a rally yet yeah, yeah i mean so early in the show we, we covered binance right binance hasn't really began to rally yet and we think i mean if that happens binance could be up there eos uh Neo as well. Definitely watch out for that. All right. Thank you, Bill. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, Ian, any Ian, any polka dot gems? Uh, I mean, so polka dot itself <laughs> is one gem, uh, but I but I think most people kind of knew that. Uh, one we've not really done. A deep dive into any particular polka dot gems yeah the only one we've been kind of doing research on is poco swap uh, from just talking to their team because uh, we've known their team for, for some time just kind of they've been in our network um, I, I, in terms of other projects I, I know people have been talking about Darwinia and all these other ones Akala but quite frankly our team has not like done any in-depth fundamental or code review on those projects yet because there are so many projects uh, and it's DeFi frenzy to to get through, right? And we have a long list of projects, so we've not gotten to all of them. But I mean, uh, the ones on, on our radar are probably those, right? I would say Darwinia, PokerSwap, uh, but this is not any kind of financial investment advice or anything like that. Uh, Bill, are you able to find any of the TA for any for any of that, like Darwinia? Or a rank. The one here is spelled D A R W I N I A, I believe. Okay, let, let me see. Let me see what I can uh, fish for here. 
Okay. Okay, Darwinian network? Yes, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's uh let's not keep the audience in suspense and I'll just take the shot that I can get something on the chart. Okay, so this is your four hour Darwinia. It's actually versus Bitcoin. Let me see if I can get it versus the dollar. Okay, there we go. All right, same picture. Okay, so this to me looks like another one of these perhaps ugly consolidation phases, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you can see with this chart, right, it did stop at one of the moon lines, right? But you've also noticed that, you'll also notice that when it gets near these lines, particularly this one, you can really get chopped up. It's not clean, okay? So what does that mean? Well, that means if you love this and you can buy it, okay, it'll be on these kind of sharp dips where everyone gets stopped out, like right there, <laughs> right? Everyone kind of gets hurt, everyone gets chopped up, and then it lurches forward, right? So this actually looks like a legit bull market, only because of how hard it is to be long. <laughs> you know, one of the things that you know I've talked about, we joke about it. How do you know that this crypto market is a real bull market? Well, it's simple because it, it's hard as hell. It's mm -hmm. hard, right? Everybody thinks it's like put on your Bitcoin Christmas sweater and watch it all go up. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, these things consolidate. They go through levels. They run stops. You, you sell out, you get frustrated, you go for a walk and it's higher. Mm -hmm. So when you start to see that kind of action, you know, I think it means somebody is like accumulating it, right? When you see like, you know, stops being run or lines being, you know, choppy. So that's, that's just, you know, I, it's, I, I pull these up and I just read it like I see it. All right. Well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. So also tell us what Polkadot projects are people bullish on? Tell us down in the comments below. Is it Darwinia? Is it a PokeSwap? Is it some other project? Tell us down in the comments below. Okay. All right. So I think it's time for us to wrap up soon. Uh, okay. So let's make this the, the last question, I think. Can you please look into DAO stack and trust swap along with air swap? Okay, so those are a ton of coins. Uh, I don't think we can look into all of them. Um, are you able to find any of those, Bill? There's DAO stack and trust swap, and then also air swap. So he basically added all three in his question. <laughs> okay. So let me let me bring let me let me bring up trust swap. Okay. Okay. So when something moons right out of the gate like this, uh, it it's one of the hardest reads. What I can tell you about this is the fact that it made this kind of box on like the four hour chart and then went higher, okay, means that, you know, it, it, it's got, it's something I would not get in front of. Let's put it that way. So if you were <laughs> long this, you know, if you want to let it ride, feel free, right? But I mean, that's a lot of gratification all at once but you had to earn it because you had to hang on for say five or six days in that gray box. Now, what's the next one? Uh, it was Dow stack D A O S T A C K. Yeah. Dow okay. stack. Wow. Okay. 
All right. So I guess this is a good example of the bigger the base, the higher into space. And it looks like what this is doing is Okay, so these things, they moon, okay? And then they come back and they retest something, right? You're always looking, or I'm always looking with these things for reference points, okay? To try to find out where to buy the dip, right? So assuming we should buy the dip, where should we do so? Okay, now doing this on the air, it looks like the moment where despair finally kicked in, right? Everyone watched it crash. And then this was just like the start of the give up trade was right here in May of 2018. Then it explodes through there, right? And then frequently it comes back down and retests that critical level. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if Dow stack holds on a dip right about where it is now, uh, it can resume. Okay. Cause again, uh, it kind of came crashing down so it could turn around and go the other way just as easily. Uh, but you're going to have to earn it, right? You're going to have to watch it go up and then have to be brave enough to buy the dip. So, you know, if you like this, you're definitely going to have to be brave enough to deal with the dip that's happening right now. And what was the other one? Uh, it was air swap A I R. S W A. Yes. Okay. Again, this is sort of classic, right? This is actually a weekly chart. Okay. So if I go to a daily chart, okay, it looks like it's absolutely gone to the moon and you missed it all. But if you go to a weekly chart, <laughs> it looks like it just started. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So um, just stick with this whole idea of the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Right. If these three coins are something that you like, then you can buy dips until it doesn't work anymore. Right. Now, that sounds easy because you, your story about helium. Right. Like what level do I buy the dip at? Right. Like. Sometimes if you're not able to buy the dip, because I can tell you right now, I've been watching Chainlink and everybody wants to buy Chainlink on a dip. This is for like going on for like a couple months and it doesn't dip and helium doesn't dip. So sometimes when it doesn't dip and everyone wants to buy the dip, guess what? It turns around and moves. And then if it's easy to buy the dip, well, yes, you bought the dip, but congratulations, you just caught the falling knife and it keeps dipping. The cheap get cheaper. Yeah. So for this person who asked the question, if you like these coins, you can buy the dip. If the only reason you like these coins, and this can be a lesson for alts in general, if the only reason you like it is because you missed it, go for a walk, take a deep breath, there'll be another trade. Okay? You yeah. got to have a reason why you like it other than you missed it and your buddy caught it. <laughs> yeah. Well said, well said, Ryan, and a, a great way to end the show. So tell us what you think uh, about all those three projects down in the comments below. Well, all right, Bill, uh, it's it's been great. Uh, any last words for our crypto family? Friends, when it comes to crypto, here's the question you need to ask yourself. What kind of conversation am I having about crypto? So we have great data and Ian's told you that we've got AI and machine learning. What I think we have is we have, because we have those things and we have great people, we've got one of the best conversations about crypto. Before you trade, you have to think and talk. Okay. And that's what we can help you with. So crypto family, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for trusting us to do the analysis that can help you get where you want to be. All right. Thank you, Bill. Good night. See you next week. All right. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. Let me... Sorry, just give me a second here to wrap that up. Yeah. So, I mean, as Bill said, um, thank you, Crypto Family. I mean, alt season. Alt season. We just landed on the moon and the lab. This is what dreams are made of. <laughs> We've been waiting for forever. 
since basically January 2018, when the bull run was kind of ending, right? And basically till I'd say maybe middle, around Q2 2018. So it's been two years since we had moments of glory like this. So first of all, congrats to everybody who's making money, whether you're making money on Chainlink, whether you're making money on Helium, whether you're making money on Matic Network. Matic Network is finally rallying. Uh, I mean, I, disclosure, um, I'm very bullish on Matic. I, I do own Matic. I do own Helium. I do own Chainlink. Um, I still have some Chromium as well. That's also been pumping as well. But hey, whatever cryptocurrency you've made money on, please share that with us, crypto family, down in the comments below. I know some people are making money on reserve rights. Some people are making money on Darwinia, Dow Stack, other cryptocurrencies. Share the love, spread the love, okay? Because we're all going to the moon together in one rocket ship, right? It's called Tokenmetrics, crypto family, right? That's why our logo is a rocket, because we're going to the moon together. All right, so here, let, let me check in with our audience and see how we're doing as we wrap up the show. Mooning in November. What's up, Tyrone? How are you? Uh, no, don't go. I'm loving the stream. <laughs> well, I mean, we've kind of done the TA. We've done the price predictions. I mean, if, if, you, if you enjoy the live stream, you would definitely uh, enjoy the private group. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, I think yesterday we had eight people join in one day, right? I mean, it's basically, <laughs> if anything, I should probably have Bill do like TA on how many people joined the private group. Because <laughs> right now it's basically breaking out, right? And that's how we know we're in a bull run. But that's how we also know that we're offering people value. And as more people join, it makes us even want to offer even more value. Right, because it's kind of like basically network effects, right? So as more people go and join the group, it's now getting even more interactive. People are kind of sharing their insights, what they're trading. Uh, one, one person today asked people to kind of share their portfolios, and we all just shared our portfolios, what we're doing. I shared mine, right? So it's it's really becoming one big family, and people also are basically sharing their success, what trades are making them money, what investments are making them money. And being around like-minded people, because not just us, the team, right? Bill and I and Paresh, but also like-minded users of token metrics, investors globally, people in in the U.S., Mexico, uh, Australia, Switzerland, global crypto family uniting and just being able to share insights. It's it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So thank you to everyone who has joined. Definitely appreciate that. And thank you to everyone who has been just using token metrics. I mean, because I know, I mean, uh, this year was not easy. There have been some growing pains with our team just working, taking input from the, you, the audience, working to fix bugs and everything, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, we're doing what we do for you. And because we measure everything. Uh, I don't think I can share the full thing. Uh, but what I can share, because uh, I don't want to uh, break too much of people's privacy, right? But what I can share, to kind of just show you that, hey, we appreciate all the feedback you've given us to help us improve and become a better platform. Because if we go to to our NPS score, right? In the last 30 days, it's shot up. It's now 67. All right, for those who don't know, NPS it basically means Net Promoter Score. It basically kind of shows you the, what our customers, so we survey everybody who pays to use token metrics, right? And just to make sure we're, we're offering as much value as possible and we track this, right? And sometimes right, in, in some months, right? Now, uh, for example, uh, two months back, basically back here in April, April was not, was not a good month, right? But we listened, took the feedback, adapted, worked on it with a dev team, launched, right? But ever since we lost the indices, right? The net promoter score has been going up and up and up, right? Uh, and that just, that tells us that people definitely are getting lots and lots of value from this. And this was a game changer to us, right? And the next thing we're working on is now adding alerts, right? Um, so this time frame for this, there's no time frame yet, but probably sometime next month. And 
If you think Tokenmetrics is great now, imagine being able to have email and text alerts, SMS alerts. Whenever uh, scores change, ratings change, whenever indices change, um, we're still kind of trying to figure out how that would work, but this would likely be something just, just for the investor and professional plan. Uh, right now, we're probably thinking uh, email alerts will be for investor plan, uh, and then professional would likely get text SMS alerts because sending text messages definitely is not cheap, <laughs> especially international, sending global SMS, right? So from a business standpoint, we think that will also give people in that plan even more value, right? So imagine getting a text message from Tokenmetrics saying, hey, uh, Cardano uh, price prediction just changed and it's, it's now going up 5%, 10%, right? Or hey, TA rating on this has gone down, right? So being able to give you real-time insights live in the moment in real time, that's a game changer, right? Uh, probably might cause some people to to FOMO and just kind of run <laughs> and not really be so in the moment with everyday things, but hey, we're in a crypto bull run, bull run right? So you basically have to be glued to your phone, right? Glued, glued, glued to Telegram, glued to people in the know and just being able to have those insights because if it's time to take profit, sometimes you gotta take profit ASAP, <laughs> all right? So, with that being said, I mean, thank you for all the support. Uh, we'll definitely keep you posted. Uh, it, that being said, uh, let me just see if there are any other questions or comments I can briefly answer. Text message is a good idea. Uh, thank you, Riz. Uh, great job. You're a true team leader. Uh, thank you, Curtis. I appreciate it. I love you, bro. Love you too, man. Love your crypto family. What color is the Lambo? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't have a Lambo, but uh, if I... If I do, probably, yeah, I mean, Lambo, Lamborghini is probably going to have to be probably yellow, right? And my favorite color is red, right? So, but honestly, my favorite car is a Ferrari, red Ferrari, but I mean, crypto is like a Lambo thing. Uh, but honestly, if I, uh, nowadays I'm, I'm not as flashy, right? Because I've kind of been through that phase of the last bull run. So I'm definitely trying to not be so flashy, especially publicly. Uh, but I mean... If anything, I mean, Ferrari to me makes more sense, right? But Lambos are still great cars. April was a great month to buy the dip. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Diego says one chain AI models are very accurate. That's what's up. Loving it. Helium at 48 cents. Man, if Helium goes back to 48 cents, I want to accumulate more Helium. I mean, because before I didn't really put in too much, right? Because I was on... I was buying on Bilexy and I didn't really trust that exchange. Uh, but I mean, because if anything, the right time to buy it is before it goes on Coinbase. <laughs> okay. I mean, so, and then I did look into the OTC channel about possibly buying, but I don't really like doing OTC deals either. So at this point, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. But Helium, I mean, I should put my money where, where my mouth is because I did buy some, but now I've been mining. But now that mining is kind of not as lucrative as it was anymore i have to I have to buy right especially before it goes to coinbase because the way because if i believe this is going to be a top 20 top 30 market cap project i should not even be looking at the price i should just be buying because imagine trying to time the the dip of chain link two years ago right <laughs> people just kept on buying right so and i mean chain link chain link did a hundred x i mean like don't let don't let anybody I mean, just think about that. Chainlink did a hundred x, right? I believe, yeah, hundred. Because when I got in, it was twenty five cents, I believe, maybe even lower, right? So, actually, no. But it's about to do a hundred x, I think. Anyway, I, I have to go back and double check what the price was, but it's almost a hundred x, right? I mean, just think about that. But not only did it do a hundred x, but one thing nobody can ever take away from. It, from us, crypto family, our team, you guys as well. I mean, people might try to make fun of us for whatever, but n nobody, very few people were in the private sale of Chainlink. Very few people were even in the private sale of Synthetics. I mean, yes, yes, we ended up asking for a refund, right? Because they changed the hard cap and all that stuff, right? Back then when it was Haven. But how many people you know found those two projects, the hottest DeFi projects, two years back, before the VCs did, 
I, I recall meeting Synthetics in Australia. <laughs> right, actually, the marketing person came to talk to us to, to basically pitch me the project at the tennis open. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty crazy now kind of thinking back, right? Uh, I mean, I, I definitely messed up by by asking for a refund, right? But I mean, I probably would have sold early too, right? Because there was a, a long bear market, right? But either way, I mean, obviously, we put our L's behind us and we learn from that, right? And synthetics has performed well. And, you know, you definitely got to give it the props, right? So synthetics, chain link, looking back. But now if we're trying to find the next chain link, I mean, I, I if I really think Helium is that, I, I think if I had to pick two projects, Helium and Blockstack and Matic, actually, I'm sorry. Yeah, Helium, Blockstack, Matic. But Matic, Matic to me is an easy buy because... I mean, I, 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 I know the team, I'm, I'm close to them, uh, I've done my research, and it's ERC-20. Like ERC-20 tokens, those I buy very quickly. But if it's not ERC-20 tokens, then I have to go on some other exchange and buy and all that stuff. But if you told me, okay, in two to three years, what projects will be the next synthetics, the next chain link that we were early on before anybody else was? I would say Matic Network and Helium. Right, block stack too, but block stack we weren't too early on com compared to everyone. But helium, because helium, I mean, I met the team in San Francisco in 2018, went to their offices. Matic Network 2018 at the Crypto World Tour pitch competition in Hyderabad, India. All right, so like talking about like hidden gem, hidden gem. <laughs> so I think those are the two projects that I'm very, very bullish on long term. Right, so if anything, I should just buy more. Right. I mean, right now, because people ask me, Ian, what's your portfolio? Right. So just to kind of share with people. So I have Helium. I have Matic. I have uh, Ethereum. I still have some Chromia because Chromia, they've had like this almost two year lockup. So I think I, I still have some some uh, Chromia, uh, but barely. Uh, I have Elf. Uh, I, I didn't buy that. Uh, I invested in Pixio Chain. Then Pixio Chain basically did nothing. It was basically pretty much just crashed. Then the ELF team give basically an airdrop to Pixio Chain holders. So we're able to get some money out of that. So uh, I didn't sell everything, but I, I sold maybe like, you know, I'm not sure how much I sold even. <laughs> Uh, probably, I think I sold about 25 to 75%. Uh, I'm not sure. Either I sold a th one quarter or I sold three quarters. But And I, and I put the rest into ETH. Then uh, right now, I'm basically trading Chainlink um, as part of the price prediction, right? So actually, uh, let me see if I can kind of share that here. So the price prediction indices are on fire. Uh, so that's kind of what I've been following. Uh, I've not been following everything to the letter, but so basically the price prediction index monthly, uh, two coins it had in there, uh, Matic I already had, so that one I didn't have to do much because Matic is really for me a long-term hodl. So I'm staking Matic. Uh, the ROI on that was, is about 58% uh, annually, uh, but I think it, it uh, does decrease over time. The Matic to me is long term. That one, long, long term portfolio, Matic and Helium. That, I'm I'm not trying to, to sell Helium. That one I'm definitely not selling because because I have that. So I just just I just want to accumulate, not even look at the price. Uh, Chainlink. That to me is purely a trade just for this month. Uh, whenever it, it drops out of the price prediction monthly index, then I'll be out of Chainlink. Uh, that one I'm not planning to fall in love with at any point in time. Um, then the I do have some Ethereum on the sidelines, so I do plan to probably buy one cryptocurrency from the from the weekly price prediction index because that one is now really starting to do well, especially now in alt season. Uh, it's actually been one of the better performing uh, indices uh, index. So. The best performance from that, just kind of going through this. Uh, actually, I'll share this since it's, it's going to update any anyway, right? So this is the the weekly price prediction, right? So the holdings, Kava, Nervous, Nervous Origin, Cody, Chromia, Reserve Rights, Polkadot, Morpheus Labs, Ferrum, Chainlink, 
right? Uh, if we just go to the weekly performance to, to kind of show you guys how well it's been doing. Okay, yeah, weekly is, is it dipped all the way to 125, then went to 183, but it's really in the like the last one month where it's 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 been basically on a tear. It went from 39 to 183. All right, and looking at this, all right, so the month is not over yet. Right, right now we're basically halfway through, right? So it predicts snow versus will be up 38%. So the ones that are out, outperforming is basically reserve rights, right? Up over 100%. Then Morpheus Lab is also doing, is the second, actually third uh, chain link is in here as well. So this is kind of a nice, a, a nice diversified portfolio. I think all these have performed relatively well. Obviously, they aren't doing like a 10x in like a week per se, right? But one thing to note, this does not look at illiquid coins. This looks at projects with with over half a million in, in trading volume, right? So this does try to filter out the, the low cap coins that are on exchanges that might not be so trustworthy, right? So next update on this is August 19th. So whenever this updates, I myself will come here, take a look, and I'm probably pick, pick a coin here to add to my portfolio as a weekly trade. So that would basically mean I, I would have Chainlink and some other coin in my trading portfolio, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, as mentioned before, I mean, we're definitely very pleased with this. And it's, it's doing very, very well. I, I mean, if we go to the value investor, uh, index. Uh, the best performing one has been the the annual portfolio, but the issue with this is this only updates once a year, right? So, um, so I in this index I have Matic and Eth Ethereum, um, but for anybody out there who wants to just kind of buy buy ten coins long term, not trade, huddle, come back a year later, look at the results, right? This would be a good portfolio for that. Um, in terms of performance, quarterly now is, is actually the, surpassed the quarterly technology. Okay, so quarterly, the quarterly technology, uh, I think be, because it ha it has some exposure to 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 some DeFi coins, but I don't think it has made an update on this. Let me take a look. Yeah, so this has Compound. Compound is now kind of bouncing back. Compound, Cosmos, Dash, Eternity, Cardano. Cardano has done well. If we go down here to the performance so cosmos cosmos is is up over 124 percent ethereum neo so the roi for this is based on the time horizon so this is quarterly so this is basically in the last uh, since july 4th right so this is kind of think of this as your blue chip safe picks right so they aren't like sub 100 million dollar market cap coins, right, that are super hella risky. These are kind of nice, solid investments that aren't necessarily based purely on market cap, right? So the low cap coins in here would be Matic and Eternity. Uh, Compound is is still pretty new, but but uh, this also, next update, we'll, we'll have some new coins because we did, we did add some new coins that are, I would say, in the top 10 in terms of technology. So and on the next update in October, this will be totally different. All right, uh, let me let me check in with the audience before we wrap up. How to join the private group? Uh, so you have to be on the professional plan. So if you just go to uh, token metrics, uh, just click pricing, all right? Professional plan, basically private investor network and uh, webinars that's the private group right so if you join that then it, sh it will send you an email and that email will be then i mean yeah then just respond back to that email with the customer support and they'll basically kind of uh, bring you in right so but with that being said i mean alt season breakout congratulations to everybody who's making money right now is the time to be in crypto shut up and take my money shut up and take my money and as we like to say we just landed on the moon in the Lambo. Moon Lambo. Taking pictures with the zoom and the ink.
thank you crypto family it's been a pleasure uh awesome having you i mean thank you i mean it's been incredible i mean you guys have allowed us to really now even be able to expand the team right so being able to offer our crypto family a product that they love right? because quite frankly i mean in that bear market it was rough it was rough because everything was like I, I put it as mentioned before i put in over two million dollars of my own money funding this right be, before there was even really be, be, before we even launched right so some people thought i was like taking a huge risk you know would, would people want to use token metrics and all this but i mean you guys have showed us that people like this right i mean i i showed you the nps score uh, last month we grew over 60 percent. this month we've, we've grown over 50 percent on pace to grow over 60 percent like each month is bigger than, than, than our last which is hard to do right because bitcoin having was our best month right bitcoin having we, we grew over 100 percent in in may then in june we grew 10 percent from from the prior month then in july we blew up basically all right 100x <laughs> and now this month we're on pace to shatter july nice so thank you guys i mean i definitely appreciate it um and and i will definitely find a way to to re reward our crypto family just because you guys have done so much for us and we'll definitely find a way to reward you so i mean if you're a customer just make sure that you you, you get our emails make sure that they aren't going to spam we're definitely working on something all right uh, i mentioned this before uh i can't really s say too much uh just kind of due to legal reasons <laughs> but i mean just all i can really say i mean I've, I've kind of hinted at it right but i mean we are trying to get involved in the state fund movement right and we're trying to because as mentioned before we want to build kind of like a trading bot right basically right trading bot robo advisor whatever you want to call it my lawyer said not to call it robo advisor because it's not quite an investment advisor yet right so especially if we go towards the, the DeFi route but imagine if we can take our indices and have people be able to trade them through smart contracts right so that's what we, our team has been researching on right I, mean, I think that part i can't disclose uh so we've been looking at ethereum Paresh has been also looking at uh polka dot as well right because uh even though it's early uh if, if their technology is good and if they can do what we want to do that could be something very interesting to build on right but probably leaning more towards ethereum but I mean, we, we want to really eat our own dog food, right? Because we're kind of building this up in levels, right? We, we built the analytics platform, we built the indices. Now we need to automate the investing and trading in the indices, right? Where it's just push button, kind of like Uber, boom, price prediction index. Here, just put in, for example, just put in uh, all your Ether, all your DAI into your wallet, smart contract, whatever it goes through, buys all the different price prediction and index, uh, index holdings, and it does the the trading and buying for you, the rebalancing. If we can automate that, that is the holy grail. That is the holy holy grail of crypto, right? And that's that's something we know people want because you guys have told us, right? That that's what you want, right? And we're trying to see how we can make that a possibility. Uh, so definitely. Thank you to all the customers. I know I've been rambling a lot. <laughs> but with that being said, uh, thank you. We'll be back Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. This was filmed on, as it says in the bottom right, August 16th, because people have been complaining about us not having the dates on because we take the clips and post them. But yeah, with that being said, thank you, crypto family. I'm out. And as we like to say, we just landed on the moon. The moon is not the limit to the moon. And beyond. I'll see you next week, Crypto Family. Please subscribe, smash the like buttons. Smash the like buttons because we're all going to the moon together. Crypto Family. <laughs>